I just walked in. I, I look like um, uh, I look like the internet thinks I look. You look great. Thank you, but thank you so much. I, I like it. This. Thank you so much. I don't. It's need very that. Antifa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Trixie Mattel, you look like you're about to storm the Capitol. I know. <laughs> so I do need a little bit of lip gloss. Uh, um, Same. Chris DiStefano. Yeah. Such a fan. I'm. Are you? What are you kidding me? Just, I'm a fan. I agree. Uh, love it. Does everyone mispronounce your name? Yeah. It's so annoying. It's whatever though. Do you just have to make that your name now? Um, yeah, well, it's like kind of whatever people say. I just go with whatever pronunciation they want. It's just, interesting because it's kind of the one word you can pronounce, no one else can pronounce. Right, exactly. It is a little bit ironic. Even in my own family, like my father <laughs> says Di Stefano and his sister says Di Stefano. Some people smell, spell it with a capital S. I spell it with a small S because I'm just like emotionally have issues, but it's just I'm just not confident. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I mean, whatever you want to call me, I don't care. Are we friends? thousand percent we are absolutely new friends new friends new friends new friends i don't like you not, look like you're convincing yourself right now i'm legit friends with you we are i swear to god I'll, <laughs> i'm friends with you and i'm the type of person i'll be friends with you no matter what you do to me i could just get over it really like, very quickly i don't hold on to anything really yeah dude i'm just not that person um okay w walk me through that what like I just don't, I just don't get bent out of shape yeah. for, uh, around for anybody. Like whatever people want to do, uh -huh. I'm just cool. I, my whole goal in life is just to be like happy every day, yeah, and just like push my kid in a swing. So we're new friends, new friends. But I feel very close to you. I feel very close to you too. I feel very close to Benton because Benton has been DMing me for how long? Benton for ever since Lucy told me to. So a year. <laughs> Shout out Lucy from Nashville yeah, Comedy Club. Yeah. From Zany's we Nashville. Love her. We love Lucy. That's how Benton and I met. That's where we met. Yeah. And if Benton, I said before, if Benton ever wants to, you know, come at me in two years, I have all the, the messages he sent me screenshotted <laughs> and in my lawyer's office. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you have a lawyer. Yeah. Um, I so, actually do. I got the, Shout out Jeff Cohen. He used to be ch that, he's Chunk from the Goonies. Le LegalZoom.net. <laughs> not even dot com. Why did you stop History of Hyenas? No, but well, be just because because just because we wanted to do like other things like mm -hmm. we I was like you know like we just we're talking about history like uh, there's a lot of times where like you know Giannis shout out Giannis Papas wanted to do other things and I want to talk about other things and we we're like oh like we did this podcast it was so fun for three years let's yeah. just go support each other and do it the other way so that's what that's the only reason why we and, like, stopped. How do you know you're done like how do are you like we we like I think like I think like we just kind of got to because we're friends first that's yeah. the thing we were friends first we yeah. were like yo like sometimes like you know we're only been like meeting once a week just do the podcast we don't talk anymore like dude like you know it's just a podcast it's like money is like whatever dude like well, let's well, let's be friends you mean first. it was failing is what you're saying <laughs> yeah no actually yeah. it was doing pretty good it was I doing did, great I, I was supposed to be on it and then we I know we were about to be on yeah. I was about to do it the day the pandemic COVID. hit in New York. When that pandy hit, it yeah, it did, I, you did not. And the, you flaked. I didn't fucking flake. No. You, you pussy. Because I was like, New Yorkers, I'm like an L.A. snowflake idiot. I'm in New York. I'm like, fuck it. I'll go do the podcast right now. Everyone's like, get out of New York. I'm like, I said yes to this podcast. No. It wasn't me. Uh, our producer, the producer was being, he, they were scared uh, of COVID. Yeah, yeah. Everybody who was scared of COVID in my life, they all got it. <laughs> but the ones who just came out were like, listen, I'm going raw dog. It's like, I kind of feel like COVID showed up to my body. We're like, there's too many viruses here. We've already attacked this body enough. <laughs> this is too crowded this for us. This is too crowded. <laughs> but, but it was a good, you know, it was a great show. And like, you know, like, yeah, yeah. dude, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's interesting to know when to call something. I'm fascinated by that. I yeah. usually get canceled before I, it's my idea to yeah. end something. Yeah. But it's, uh, it, that's an interesting, very mature sure adult thing to go you know like we had a good run yeah let's call it and like people you know and that's the thing like another th lesson i learned like with the internet like people will create all their own narratives and it's just like I, it's been like a good lesson for me to just like let it go in like one ear and out the other because the things some people are saying about why we ended i'm like dude that is so not true but i yeah. just what whatever i kind of feel like i mean i don't owe any but we Giannis and i both don't owe anybody an explanation of why it ended we know why it ended and we're just happy that the fans we got and happy people liked it i'm kind of obsessed with that you used to be a physical therapist i did i was I technically, well, I actually still am now. I wasn't, and now my license got reinstated during the pandemic. Governor Cuomo from New York uh, reinstated everybody, but Cuomo, he never really got. People hated him. They've hated him oh, forever. Got it, They've got hated it, got it, got it. him. So Cuomo, so why they vote for him? Because nobody votes in New York. We oh. didn't know. Now, now people would know, but like I don't know. Fucking, I never voted for the governor or the. Yeah. Ma I mean, Mayor De Blasio in New York. People hate him this even more. In. Chris doesn't vote. I don't vote, <laughs> and but I legally can. I'm not a felon, as some of you idiots may think. I'm not. <laughs> Not a felon. Just not interested. That's my father. My father legally can't vote. 
<laughs> but whatever. A felon? He's a felon. For yeah. what? He, when I was a kid, he um, he served prison time uh, before I was a kid and when I was a kid for like, you know, loan sharking, racketeering, all like that. He was Mine never too. in the mafia. I want to state my father was never in the mafia. but Never he, was cool enough. Yes, never was cool. His nickname is Tony Balls, <laughs> but he never was in the mafia, but he played like he was with those guys. And how do you avoid being in it? And don't you kind of, if you know stuff, you're in. Yeah, well, he, that's the thing. Like my father, my the reason why I knew my dad, because at first my dad would always be like, you know, Chris, when I I was a kid like we would go have to go visit him in prison he would always mm -hmm. tell me he'd be like you know they got the wrong guy like i'm innocent and i kind of was like no you're not <laughs> like you know like your nickname is tony balls like i know your friends like aren't my uncles are all like goomba idiots <laughs> but when um there was a humongous <laughs> prison sting that happened in like 2007 2008 the fbi came and raided and like kind of put the final nail in like the new york italian mafia coffin and it was a big thing on the new york post front page of the paper 107 or 105 FBI uh, uh, gangsters rounded up um, and there was all their pictures. And I remember looking at that photo on the front page of the New York Post. I was actually in graduate school at the time. And I was like, wow, like 10 of those guys were at my father's barbecue three weeks ago. Like he is, he does know them. He was lying to me. He's not were innocent. cooking human hands. Yeah. You know what I got to say, though? What? Be, when the mafia was there, I, ne I when I was a kid, we used to go to like the, the festival in like Howard Beach and like John Gotti They'd was there. They know how to put on a party. Dude, John Gotti would always give the kids cotton candy. Yep. If any, I remember one time this guy was like, be, like, um, was like hitting his girlfriend or his wife. Yeah. These guys beat the shit out of him. Like the neighborhood was safe when the crime was there. Yes, I know yes. that they do bad things. And I, I know the cotton candy was laced with PCP. Yes. But it's like, you know what I mean? No, but like I'm <laughs> telling you that whenever New York was so much safer yeah. when the mafia was there, I almost think like, like if, if you I, weren't a store owner or a listen, yeah, listen, you got to pay for protection, <laughs> yes. but you're protected. Here's the thing. It's yeah. like, what do you what do you want? Do you want to be protected or do you want to get bricks thrown? And let me ask you a question. The mafia, because I just did that um, uh, podcast for one that was about Silvio Berlusconi and okay. in, in Italy. And there's an amazing book called Gomorrah. It's a uh, an investigative book by this guy published in 2006, which documents his infiltration and investigation of various areas of business and daily life um, uh, in Italy, in the okay. Italian mafia. OK. And he got he got he got. No news outlets would let him promote it. Sure. Like it, Italy just shut down and would sure. not let the book get sold. He couldn't get an apartment all of I a sudden. It. It's like a crazy story of this guy. Right. How does the mafia, like, was it initially conceived as what, from what I understand, to fill in the gaps that the government, to provide the things the government wasn't providing. That was the initial, it was kind of like some Robin Hood stuff initially yeah. in Sicily. And then like anything else, like like even the things that are happening in our country now, there's always an overcorrection. Yeah. That's just, as human beings, we will always overcorrect. We'll always go too far, mm -hmm. good or bad, mm -hmm. always go too far. So yeah, so the mafia then they started to, you know, go too far like right. they got when really when the mafia the only issue ever is when the mafia started to get into drugs yeah. that's like the old school thing like that was when you shouldn't have done that's why John Gotti when he came in and started allowing drug stuff yeah. that's when people that's when a lot of problems start to happen it feels like unlike history hyenas like, it feels like there's, there's no a good way for the mafia to be like should we just call it no it feels like once you're the mafia what? can't just stop here's the thing though here's I gotta be honest for as much as the mafia I mean listen you know they do dirt also, stuff. do they on the internet like are they texting like how has no. the mafia not gone down in the day of the internet Dude, i'm telling you this mark my words because nobody knows who really created it the mafia created bitcoin clip that love it clip that that i'm telling you crypto the mafia created bitcoin Dread pirate roberts is an italian from queens that's who it is <laughs> that's who it is i'm Dread telling you what, pilot roberto I'll, I, I and i'll be honest with you if if with all the stuff like going on if the mafia was still around we would all be vaccinated here's what if, you know 100 percent. you would we would all be getting vaccinated for 200 cash yeah you get moderna pfizer whatever you want babe that's what they say they'd open it up you want johnson and johnson that's 250 <laughs> I, I, I i do have you seen this um uh show uh uh your honor no oh but I, you gotta watch great it. is that that's with uh what's his face brian cranston yes. right yeah and there's a uh, there's i know emily it's it, emily's crying we were sobbing watching it but there's this i don't want and then whitey bulger i'm obsessed with and i do think and rogan talks about this a lot him and i were talking about it and i don't know who he's talking about it on this podcast the other day I am so attracted to dangerous men sure there's also it's very tricky because um the mafia just i mean 
I, I'm I'm well, in love with men. It's so hard that, to not love men. Dude, that's like why that. I'm here. My mother graduated from Columbia University. She's an Ivy League graduate person, and my father's nickname is Tony Balls. Dude, I mean, I why love do you it. think? I love what it. do you think? It's because my mother wanted a fling with a bad boy, Fuck. and then she fucked up, and now I'm here. I yeah. remember being 17 years old and kind of questioning my mom, like, why did you do this? Right, right. Like, how did you pass every test to get into Columbia, and then you fail the Tony Balls one? Like, <laughs> my dad could have been Elon Musk or some shit. No, don't want him. No, no interest. No. I want the guy that's killed someone. I remember when. I was watching that scene in Black Mass. I don't like to admit this at all. Yeah. And when he was choking Juno Temple, I was oh, like, yeah. that's my guy. How about this? And you know, you know what? I learned so much respect from my father, especially like, you know, in certain situations in my life. I'm like, oh, wow. Because my dad always had like the right intention, but the wrong move. Mine Cause too. Because his whole thing was always like, hey, like you need to protect women. Always. That's what it is. And I got an engagement ring for my like seventh birthday that I just wore as a ring. Oh, yeah. Like I didn't know where it came from, oh, yeah. you know? No, my dad is all, that's what the mafia is about respect. And I remember like going into when I initially got into like a, the, my co-parenting situation, I remember that my father, you know, and my mother divorced when I was one, but my father always respected my mom. Like, uh, and always when I was a little kid, he was like, you always will respect your mom. You're the man of the house. I'm like, I'm legit five. But he was like, you're the man of the house. And so, so I remember one time my mother started dating this guy who was actually one of my friend's fathers. But anyway, he dumped my mom and started dating a woman who lived directly across the street, like my mom's boyfriend. And my mother was heartbroken. And my father used to come pick me up for like, baseball practice or basketball practice, whatever, on Saturday mornings. And one time my mom, he comes upstairs and my mom was like sitting, looking out the window across the street to seeing if like her ex-boyfriend is going into this woman's house who lives across the street and she was like crying. And I was playing video games in my room because I was just like a snotty teenager. And my father comes into my room. He goes, what's up? What's why is your mother crying? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, that guy that she was dating, he she, you know, he dumped her. And now he's mm -hmm. dating the woman across the street. And he was like, you're going to do something about that. Wow. I was like, I'm 14. Like, what do you, what do you want me to do about it? Like, I have psoriasis. <laughs> I have I have proactive. I have wild acne. You want me to pop a pimple on his lip? I can't do anything, Dad. I'm a child. And so my dad goes, I I swear to God, he goes, don't leave the room. I'm going to go get, and he said like this. He went exactly this. He goes, I'm going to go get bagels. I was like, okay, you just did that telling me not to leave. Now I'm 100% gonna leave. So I start to creep down the stairs, like two minutes later, I swear to God, because my mother's looking out the window, she starts screaming out the window. She's like, Tony, Tony, stop, you're gonna kill him. My dad, I swear to God, was beating the shit out of this guy, his name was Brian, at, across the street, beating him. I swear, he comes walking back. It kind of felt like in Goodfellas, like when, yeah, yeah that, like when Ray Liotta comes back, and he's like, mm -hmm. hide the gun, Karen. I felt like Karen, I was like, what do I do? You know, and he's coming back across the street. I swear to God, he's got like blood yeah. on his chin, and blood right. on top of his shirt and he goes that was your job that was your job and hot, i'm like again hot, dad hot. i have psoriasis and now it's flaring up because you've just tipped my emotions so now i have an itchy spell my mother's crying my dad and then Yo, my you had all the tools you need to rip off your headgear and just yeah, fucking start stabbing start, a motherfucker yeah but my dad and then i remember we're, we're you know we're, we're leaving we went to staten island and my and then it wasn't until like two hours later we're sitting in traffic on the Verrazano bridge which takes you from from brooklyn to staten island and he's like you know i shouldn't have done what i did back there right and i'm like yeah i know i know mom knows the police now we all know that that was a bad move he goes well i'm just saying next time you have to protect your mother don't just be playing video games you're playing fucking sonic the hedgehog while your mother's crying he goes never let another man have to step in and do that you protect your women and i'm like okay and then and then i kind of felt that when i then i got it because i got into a situation then where like you know my mother my it's crazy how like the apple never falls far from the tree either because oh my, god i hope it does i'm no, fucked if it doesn't well because my mom when you you know, she, my whole life was her, her being like, you know, she's this Ivy League graduate. My father's a criminal. She would always be like, honey, like pronounce your R's. You're not going to sound like your father. You're not going to make that mistake I did. You like, never succeeded in that. I never did. No, the fucking shit. I've <laughs> pronounced the R. You disappointed your mother yeah. deeply. I'm like, yo, do you have any more butter? <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, I just said, she's like, you sound like an idiot. And, um, and But anyway, and she was like, you know, like she had a, had this fling. And, and she was like, but you will not make that mistake. You will get married. You will do this. You will do that. And I, and I went to school. I listened to my mom. I never got in any trouble. You know, real What's trouble. What's your mom's name? Lynn. Love. Never got into any trouble. You know, went through graduate school and everything, and like just checked What'd every box. What you go to graduate school for? I have a doctorate in physical therapy. Wow. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. Okay, so that's okay. So I don't so, know how physical. I literally, I thought physical therapists could just kind of <laughs> show up. And, dude, and no, I thought so too. Like throwing them in a nice bath. It I don't was know. such a confusing thing to like, because I would never call myself doctor, but like my my kids who I graduated with were like, we're gonna announce ourselves as doctor. I'm like, that's the stupidest thing ever. Like we can massage people's elbows. Like don't. <laughs> but do wait, it. dude, I I broke my shoulder. Right, I right. fractured my shoulder this direction and tore my rotator cuff. 
I went to physical therapy. I literally, every physical therapist I went to, I was like, You're, this isn't real. This isn't a real thing. No. When I, you, I broke my shoulder, I literally had to take a thing and just do this yes. for like 45 minutes yes. for six months. Because all because the main thing when you hurt your shoulder like that is you don't want to get frozen shoulder. That was always trying to, adhesive Dude. capsulitis. Dude, and then I had to, that's <laughs> fucking impressive. And then I had to do this. I don't know if you can see it. I had to just put my arm on something yep. and just swing Gravity, it. baby, the swings. But I wasn't allowed to use my... No. It was so annoying and so hard, and yeah. I'm still not sure if my therapist was accredited. No, I'm, sometimes it looks like bullshit physical therapy, and sometimes it probably is, but I was a pediatric physical therapist, Aww. so I worked with like mentally and physically uh, handicapped kids, so I felt like the impact there, but when I was doing orthopedics, yeah, I first came out of school, and I was like, this lady's bitching to me about like a pulled muscle in her fucking pinky. Like, <laughs> um, We take a break in this um, uh, emotional roller coaster of two people that simply can't get enough attention <laughs> and <laughs> cannot say enough quickly enough uh, to talk to you about my mustache. So <laughs> I have been informed by my lover uh, who is just fearless. He's a fearless man. He points out hairs coming out of my moles. He points. Oh God. Yeah. I apparently have a bunch of moles under my chin that have hairs coming out like, like coarse uh, oh. a lost pubes that have migrated <laughs> north. And he's recently pointed out to me that I have a straight up mustache. I don't see it. Because I just shaved it with my oh. Billy razor. <gasps> Amazing! <laughs> I I literally was like, okay, I'm because he was trying to pluck it with a tweezer and I was like, we're not tweezing. It just, it makes me cry when yeah. I, and I do that enough as it is. I don't need yeah. help crying during the day. And so right, right, right. I was like, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get my Billy razor mm -hmm. and I'm gonna shave my mustache. And I did it in the car. Not one, not one nick. That's amazing. <laughs> and if I, that doesn't make you want a Billy razor, I don't know what will. I've never had a positive experience shaving. Then I started using Billy and I don't have that problem anymore. But razors, I am like, you guys know that when you buy something that's a product for a woman, it's the same exact product for a man, except it's like pink. Mm -hmm. They charge you like $7 more. The pink tax. Men's razors are like a dollar for like 57 of them. Mm -hmm. And then three women's ones yeah. is like 23 bucks. They keep them bucks. in the locked case at well, CVS. That, you have to ask yeah. someone yeah. to unlock the case case yeah. so that you can shave yeah. your taint it's embarrassing <laughs> okay billy thank you for making you, shaving our hairy bodies a pleasant experience i don't have a hairy body <laughs> you can go to mybilly.com to get their starter kit for just nine dollars it's so affordable it includes their award-winning razor two refill blades and cult favorite magnetic holder go to mybilly.com to meet the razor that everyone's talking about i also did my unibrow and it was the perfect, it was perfectly, like, I did, I just, like. What's good is that people are getting less sexually attracted to you. <laughs> They're an Allure Best of Beauty winner and Nylon's beauty hit list for a reason. And to express a little love for our show, go to mybilly.com slash Whitney. It's a small way you can support us while getting the best razor you will ever own. It's just $9 to get your starter kit plus free shipping. Always. Go to mybilly.com slash Whitney. Spelled my, B-I-L-L-I-E dot com slash Whitney. Whitney. And we'll give a, a 30 minute Zoom call to the first person to shave their entire head with a billy. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> if someone does that, I'll fully, I will fully go through with that. Not, Next one. Not going to be worth it. I am getting to the point to where I use DoorDash so much, I don't even know how to order in person anymore. This morning, I have DoorDashed thrice, and it's 10 15. I forgot to get coffee this morning, and I thought, well, I'm just going to have a morning without coffee. And then I remembered <laughs> DoorDash. But no, not only did I get a, a bunch of breakfasts mm -hmm. that I would never, like, if I went to, uh, like, Starbucks or something in person, I just went, I'll have a coffee. And, like, yeah, I yeah, just, yeah. I don't think to order. But when I'm looking at the DoorDash, I'm like, I'll have a pastry. I'll have yeah. a crust. I'll have yeah. a cran, cran apple scone. Yeah. It looks so much care. better on my screen, yeah. right? Yeah. If, a, if a handsome man's going to bring it to me, right. I will nibble on a scone. I'll nibble on a scone. But if it's just me in the in line, I'm like, that's those aren't for me. They right? connect you with restaurants that you love but right now on, not and only right that, to your door. When you give them the wrong address mm -hmm. by accident, right. which I do most every time, right. they will call you and be like, hey, am I yeah. going to the right place? And you're right. like, no, right. I had a good four minute chat. Yeah. With a very charming yeah. man this Great morning. Great customer service. It was He was lovely. Right. And right. I got to start my day off making a new friend. Yeah. And not only that, you can get grocery essentials you need with DoorDash. Get drinks, snacks, 
and household items delivered in under an hour. Wow. See, it's feminism to order and not cook. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. A true equality is thank you, DoorDash. They have over 300,000- For getting women out of the kitchen. They have over 300,000 partners in the US, Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia. Mate, you can support your neighborhood go-tos. Choose from your Emily favorite. needs one. <laughs> Actively looking for one. There should be a dating app called Australian Mates. <laughs> or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and Cheesecake Factory. Ooh. For a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code WHITNEY2021. That's 25% off, up to $10 value, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app app in the app mm. store enter code whitney 2021 don't forget that's whitney code 2021 for 25% off your first order with doordash subject change oh! <laughs> emily gets a b subject to change <laughs> change oh my god it did it again subject to change terms like don't forget that's whitney 2021 Ooh, you thought you were so smart just because you can read <laughs> it creeps up on you dad <laughs> It'll get you. It gotcha. It's a little early for a mm, bean. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, just FYI, this whole thing where we're trying to actually read ads uh, properly so that we have sponsors and can continue with our show. Uh, <laughs> for you. For you. Um, uh, we were doing the bamboozle jelly bellies. And if you misread it, you had to eat a jelly belly. We both got the stink bug one. And we currently are both having um, a mental wiring issue uh, where everything now tastes like stink bug. And we're just puking it's called I, i'm going to talk about it on another podcast but it's called dis on another podcast i don't know podcast. <laughs> i'm going to go talk about it on rogan i you guys wouldn't get it let's uh, wrap up this ad where do you live and are you moving to texas what's happening i'll never move to texas and 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 i love california but i'll probably never move here i mean i gotta stay in brooklyn babe i gotta stay in bay ridge i can't be too far from my mother <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah yeah i love okay that yeah. I, I'm, I'm, but I'm in bay ridge it's I'm just in. like it's a place in brooklyn that like i love like i hope to one day like be able to like write a movie about this and maybe i should start trying now and stop waiting for somebody else to do it i want to do this but the, the the that neighborhood is so insane first of all i remember when i took my daughter trick-or-treating in 2019 <laughs> they, they were going she dress up as she she dressed up as um as um boss baby she's a oh yeah she's six right she's five five have you ever had an argument over the halloween costume um have we ever no the only arguments i've ever had has just been with her mom like you know yeah. if her mom if her whatever her mom wants to do yep Whatever her mom wants to do, it's like we got to do. But me and, by the way, me and her mom are are, uh, are back together now. Me, yes. Come on. Here's what happened. I got a wild. Come on. Listen, shout out. She, we got back together during quarantine. She got a lobotomy. Yeah, she got a lobotomy. She we forgot about all, her memory. She forgot about all the bad stuff that went I on. The mafia. I had the mafia go talk to her. You ready for this? I had. I yeah. had. I had Jimmy Balls go talk to her. Yeah, and now we have a second <laughs> child on the way. It's due July fourth. Oh my god. I swear to God, Chrissy the Patriot. Oh I'm naming it Donald. <laughs> <laughs> you, no. A guy, yeah. Look, I mean, yeah. The, what do you know if it's a boy or girl? Wait, July fourth. July fourth. You know, you wouldn't 4th. know yet. We don't know if it's a boy. No, we do know. She doesn't want to know because it's her third child, so she doesn't want to know. So, but we, uh, I'm excited about wow. it. Wow. Yeah, I That's, know. My hold on. How long were you broken up? Two years. So, so what happens with like dating in between? Do you tell each other? What? I'm fascinated by this. Me well, and no. my dude broke up for like four months and I found out that he hooked up with someone and I only went on two dates with someone and I'm furious. Listen, here's the thing is, is she, you know, she, I, when, when we got back together, I kind of, we both kind of said, because when we first met, because well, what I was saying before is how my mom got pregnant right away and was like, you can never, don't ever do that. Mm -hmm. When I met my girlfriend, mm -hmm. you know, six years ago, she got, we got pregnant right away. She mm -hmm. had a baby on like the second date. And then we went through. Is that true? I swear to God. And now, and it's the best thing that ever happened to me because, yeah. you know, I love my daughter and she changed and my whole world. how old were you at the time? 30. It's almost like you having the kid. And, re and 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 having her for five years turn you into the man that she could you could, yes could be with her. But but then when we break up and we're looking back and we're like oh you know like whatever we were great co-parents and whatever and then we had said you know when we had we were like oh if we ever had a chance to like do it over again like we would just date and do things. You never. Then we come go on. then quarantine. How about this? Then quarantine happens. We kind of you know we didn't hook up or anything, but I was just like you know coming around coming around and then. Uh, we, I leave and then I come back again in, in, we have, have like a false start. Now. You're also yeah. someone she can actually no, but then justify I, dating. But then I come back, I come back at the end of August and we hadn't had sex in two years. First night we have sex, 
six weeks later, she's like, I'm fucking pregnant again. So we did the exact thing that we did for my first child for my second child. Just the, it just doesn't stop with getting her. We just have kids. You're it's yeah, the, this is um, the universe wants you to debris have children. Yeah, but did you attempt to not get her pregnant? Were there any precautions in place? We're always attempting. We the pull and pray, hello, but Jesus isn't listening. <laughs> and 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 so and but listen, we don't regret anything. We're both like, look, we love being yeah, parents, yeah, yeah. we love our child, but my stepson, you know, who's 10, like he was confused. He was like, Whose kid is this? <laughs> he's like, Well, you're back. <laughs> And I'm like, he's like, we who? Hate you. He's like, yeah, is that, whose kid is that? Is that my dad's kid? He's like, I want my family back. I have this fucking idiot in here. He keeps coming <laughs> back and forth. That is so, what a Dude, bummer for me and, him. Me and my stepson's father, by the way, are like this. And my girlfriend hates it. We fucking love each other. We like, we love, we love being friends. We love our families. And he's just like, dude, yep. And she's like, why don't you guys like each other? I'm like, he's the fucking man. Why did you ever break up with this guy? He's got so much inside info on Bitcoin. It's unbelievable. I'm obsessed with this. Uh, uh, <laughs> My ex-boyfriend, I sort of cheated on him with one of his like heroes. It happens. <laughs> and, and he, and then, uh, uh, and then when uh, he was like all upset, we were living together. Sure. I cheat with one of his heroes. I kind of leave him for one of his heroes. I'm with one of his heroes, and he calls me like six months later, and he's like, "Do you guys want to hang out?" <laughs> like he was like, "I'm over it." Like yeah. just, I'm just curious if you guys want to maybe get dinner. Yeah. <laughs> like I'm cool. But but see, like, but I get that because I, again, if that happened to me, if if my girlfriend left me for one of my heroes, I'd be like, you know, whatever. Give me a couple weeks to work through it, and then yes. we can just jump back in. Let me ask you, what is something that in your next kid you want to do differently than the first kid? Where you're like, all right, I figured that. I'm not gonna do that again. Not gonna do that again. Yeah, um, or like, I got it now. I know to. I think I think the one thing that I you know so far like with with my daughter, I think the you know because I, I try. The first so, one's practice. Let's yeah, be honest. I'm practice. Yeah, Let's be honest. It's a guinea pig. Yeah, there's a couple of things that I'm like, yeah, that well, that's gonna be a <laughs> lifelong issue that I just created, but I didn't mean to. <laughs> but it's just an accident. She'll be a very successful comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's what it is. I think. Um, I think with you know a lot of times with me and 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 my girlfriend we kind of just would like not talk to the kids about like the problems we were having we would just like walk know. out and then come back and i didn't realize like even though my daughter was only one or two when we first broke up i was like her brain like she felt energy so so i i'm very hell bent on like working it out with her and like being honest and upfront with my kids about like everything that's going on. And you can tell them on. because kids know and when you, and when you um, don't tell kids the truth, if you're fighting with your person and you're like, oh, we were just doing an acting exercise, baby, yeah, we no. were just play acting, they start no. to doubt their reality. No, I would, I that's exactly what I would do. There was a couple of times where like and we got into arguments. And your baby's like, dad, you're a bad actor. Yeah, yeah, there's a Those couple of- his first words. <laughs> I know, there's a couple of times where I was like, where I was like, you know, like we were arguing or whatever and I, I actually said that, I'm, she was like, why were you yelling and cursing? I'm like, oh, I was going over my line. She's like, I thought you got fired from Beastmaster. Um, <laughs> I'm like, I did. That's why we live in this two-bedroom walk-up. That's why I'm doing pre-reads yeah. for CISO. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but no, but me and her, me and my girlfriend, we're, we're good now, and we're, and everything's good, it. and we're working, and we're trying to, because we never really had a chance as a couple to, every red flag that went up for me or for her, we just had to, like, find a way to get around this, because, you know, we have a child coming on the way, and it's, it was our first child, we didn't, we barely knew each other, and we're trying to figure this all out, but now we know each other. Now That's we're like, now we know, like, what pisses each other off, so, you know, it's kind of like we don't do it unless we just want to start a fight, then one of us will push that button, <laughs> and we get, you know, and one of us throws each other out of the house. Do you ever start fights just get to back. get jokes? Oh yeah, well, <laughs> I do it all the time. Yeah. It's so bad. Yeah, it's so bad. No, here's the thing with my girl is, is you know, there's I, it, I've learned if she wants to see your phone, you give her your fucking phone because <laughs> we, because because give her, her the phone. Yeah, we were. All, it's not worth it. We used to live in this apartment. On the can I tell you something? Let me just real quick. Yeah. If you just give it to us, yeah. Chances are we'll go. Okay. Yeah. Well, chances are I won't look through it if you just the, give it to me. If you say if you stutter or you yeah. flip it over or go, why do you need my phone? You don't trust me now. I need to go through it now i need to go through it yeah yeah because just go yeah sure yeah and then she'll go oh oh yeah that was easy okay. yeah because i know i learned that and i also i remember we were living in this apartment building on the 12th floor and she was like let me see your phone because she's like real deal puerto rican from brooklyn from sunset park she's like let me she got a tattoo on her tit she's like let me see your fucking phone and i was like um i was like no i don't want to show you my phone she's like let me see your phone and i was like no i don't want to give you my phone she's like let me see your fucking no, phone a, there when this is there's no way out of it you're you're yeah. making it worse and worse and worse for yourself. and i and i said what am i going to do what am i going to do and, but what was your concern what was why 
you know, she, do you honestly want to know what my I, genuine I, concern because, was? But let me tell you something, or what her concern. So if you're if you show up to dinner and this is your phone and you flip it over, I'm like, yeah. what are you doing? Just flip it. Just open. Op just keep it the, open. The concern I had is is there was like uh, I, I had posted something and then an Instagram like model had reposted it in her story and I had hearted her repost and I'm like, oh, that's I but probably that's, But is she famous? I, that's yes, business. That's I business. I know. But then also, but then the other part was the other part was then there was like you know porn stars we were sending back and forth in the group chat. It's always the guys group chat that I'm like, oh, you can't do that. No. And I just was like, you gotta name the group chat mom and dad. But she knows that. She knows oh, when I fuck. rename it. She doesn't believe anything. Okay, that's you know? fair. Because I used to cheat on guys and name them. Yeah. Uh, cheat with, yeah. Yeah. Wait, on them, yeah. And name them like Bank of America. I know. Reddit, I should. I got to think. But I, but, but we were on this plate and I wouldn't give her my phone. And like I said, we live on the 12th floor. So guys and, and group chat. But guys, let me slow down. Guys group chats. Is, yeah. That's not cheating though. No. As annoying as it is, it's, it's, it's not cheating. I don't love it, right. but there's a point in your life where you got to go, guys send photos of girls to each other. You're not allowed to send naked photos of your girls or girl. Yeah. Sending porn star photos back and forth. Like, I, I don't love it. It's right. not ideal. But here's the thing, though. Like, if you go to France, it's like there's no fucking rules there. It's like you can, as long as you don't fall in love with somebody else, yeah. it's not cheating. Like, you could go have sex with somebody because they're like, yeah, you're a human being. Like, By the whatever. Way, that, none of this is true. So I'm so sorry that Chris is lying to all of you. France is not like that at all, guys. Um, all I watched <laughs> The Pink Panther, and I'm telling you it's true. <laughs> none of this is true. He saw one nude beach, assumed they were all just fucking violently. I thought, I thought in France the rule was just not you can't fall in love with somebody. Not true. I dated a French guy uh, when I was 19, and another guy talked to me, and he threatened to commit suicide. That's I my also, first thing in pa time in Paris. I, I felt care. beautiful. I've never felt more loved in my whole life. Yeah, I wouldn't I care. Some, really? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. It was really, it was the most romantic thing that's ever happened to me. He, th he threatened to commit suicide while I was eating a meringue in his uh, parents' apartment. He, and then his parents came home and I died in a closet for like seven hours <laughs> with a meringue uh, uh, and wondering if he was commit suicide. I used to have fun. That was I that used does to be sound a fun like person. fun. I used to be a fun person. That does sound like a lot of fun. Not so much anymore. Yeah. I actually I actually looked him up on Facebook recently and he has a bunch of kids and a wife and I was like, should I just <laughs> <laughs> Uh oh, Emily's got the gun. Okay, Emily's got the gun. What when, does that mean? When I interrupt, I get shot with a nerf gun. Oh, why? Because I interrupt too much. Oh. It's almost impossible to interrupt you. But you yeah. you've managed. What did, what, did, what what was she even interrupting? I didn't hear the rest of the story about your girlfriend going through your phone. Oh, oh go your to my phone. phone is upside down. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, oh that that yeah. When we so I gave her the phone because we were living we were living on the twelfth floor and she was getting madder and madder and madder and then she kicked our air conditioner out the window. So see, it's good thing we came back to that. Yeah, yeah that's incredible. She kicked her air she kicked our air conditioner out the window and then I gave her my phone. Because I was like, yeah, hikes. I'm obsessed with her. But she's great. And yeah. then what happened? Um, no, and then and then what what happened is what always happens. And then <laughs> if, ten minutes later, <laughs> she's just not mad anymore. She makes a sandwich, and then she's like, you know, the kids are taking a nap. She goes, come in the bathroom and lock the door, and we have sex. That's just what always happens. Is I almost think she starts fights with me because she's horny, and then it's like, so you want to scare me and kick the actors out the window and tell me you're gonna fucking? She told me she was gonna like Disney World on fire because she thought I was going to Disney with my daughter and another woman, but I want my daughter and my mom. And she was like, I swear to fucking God, I will like Disney World on fucking fire. I love her. Yeah, yeah. I love that's her. What I have the, yeah, it was I crazy. I was like, I'm going with my mom. I'm with my mom and our daughter. She was like, right, let me find out you with another bitch. I will fucking light Goofy's ass on fire. <laughs> I'm obsessed with her. She's the best. Okay. She's totally yeah. my hero. But let me, but now that you're in a, a you monogamous relationship, but this yes. is, what proactive things can guys do to avoid this because guys will be like oh, i don't know i'm just following a porn star when you yeah, re-engage well, in a committed relationship with yes. a woman do yourself a favor invest in your future self and serenity and sanity unfollow just unfollow the porn stars if you need to go if you want to go to the porn star site on your own time yeah you, why do you just do a, a instagram hygiene mm -hmm. phone cleanse that's what i do i just i don't follow anybody like that and now i always post i post my content that i that i need to post and then i get off i don't check the comments i don't check the dms i stay out i yep. stay off the, i'm Protect pretty much yourself. off get ahead social of media it. get ahead of it i'm ahead i don't want i don't want to you know what i mean because it's like listen dude like i'm just like I, it's all trouble there you got to clean up your shit when you get in your yes you know what i'm saying you got to tie up the loose ends yeah. i even when when old random randoms reach out to me from a year and a half ago and no. they're like what's good i'm like 
just so you know, I'm like, so that I've got the text right there. If they text again, I can say I drew a boundary. Yeah. I'm not encouraging this. I'm not, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Protect and yourself. I, and I don't care. I mean, you know, like there's, there's even sometimes like there's, uh, there's been a couple of like girls throughout the years. Like they'll send like a, a picture, and I'm like, I'm not responding to that. And then they keep going, and they're like, you're making me feel like a whore. You're making me feel bad. I'm like, what? I don't want to open your picture because if I was, I wrote back to one girl. I was like, listen, it's not me. You need to worry about. Yeah. If my girl sees this shit, you're fucked. <laughs> She's going to follow you home. She'll jump out of your fucking bathroom and she'll oh, kill you with an empanada. So you better be careful. I would just tread lightly. <laughs> Every girl listening to the podcast is tuned out. Yeah. They were just like, oh, never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. It, it ain't about me. If if, whew, if she catches you, I so feel bad. So are you going to get married? Um, I, the thing is, she's the love of my life. I'm obsessed with her. We can get married. Oh, oh seems a little permanent. Marriage. Seems a little suffocating. We need to take it slow. We only uh, have two we kids. We have chilled two children's together. I'm obsessed with her. I don't know. The marriage thing feels like a big step. I don't know. I mean, maybe. I mean, we'll, we'll let's just, we'll have our second child and then we'll if see. If you were going to propose, how would you do it? Um, if I was gonna propose, how would I? Bobbing and weaving. Bobbing, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know. Yeah. If I was gonna propose, you've never thought about this. Well, I, well, here's the thing. I did actually propose to her when she got pregnant, when we had our first child, because how I was romantic. like, yeah, I was Catholic, and I was just like, you know, my, my mother was putting the pressure on my mother. Was like, you need to marry her, and I'm like, you're right, mom. And then I proposed to her outside. You're 25. Uh, at that point, I was 30. Okay. And and I was like, and emotionally I was emotionally 25. Emo yeah, dude, <laughs> emotionally 15. Yeah. <laughs> And and um, I proposed to her, and then uh, I just I I had her. I did it outside of her apartment, and I had her mom and her whole family like filming it, and like. Um, so you did it for TikTok? I, yeah, what I, do you was, mean? I was. Gonna say, well, at that time it was Vine, sweetie. <laughs> um, so no, I I did that because I was like, oh, like this will be like a fun video, like we can like look back at and like share. And then like a, a two months later, she was like, well, you know, we, we're not getting married. We're just it's not going to happen. And I was just like, oh, okay. And then and then um and then I and then we then we got reengaged, and then we kind of just it kept just like not happening. But then we we're like, let's just be happy being parents. And but now now we're I got to be honest with you. I think we're very happy now being a couple and parents. Like, I feel like we've grown so much as a couple going through so many hard times. Like, yeah. I'm kind of, like, happy that the so things worked out the way they worked out. So how are you going to propose next time? Let's get, what, what are we doing? I'm good. Um, I'll propose. I'm obsessed with, I came up with the best idea for Andrew Schultz's proposal. He did yeah. not take my advice. Yeah. Um. Uh, I'm good at I don't know I'm good at thinking of proposal ideas. What? I want I, I suggested that he go into a, a photo um, what are those things called photo the, booth photo booth and yeah. just spring it right there. Boom. But then it's kind of a dumb because it's it's four pictures. No, you know what I'm gonna do? And you could have a video of it. You know what I'm gonna do? She's got a couple of family members um, who are here uh, illegally. So I think what I'll do is I'll make believe I'll I'll have my friends dress up like ice, and I, they'll come in and and they'll be like, you know, we're ice. And then one of them will come out and be like, but I got the real ice. And then they'll come out with a diamond ring and put it on. But then, then also ask for their and then passports. Goes, so now you're legal and we're not. Yeah, Can yeah. we marry you? Yeah, I know. I know. So <laughs> we're legal. Yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. gonna marry all of you all so of that you. you're legal. Yeah, I know. I just did an episode on my podcast, um, Chrissy Chaos, with uh, I saw that with 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 my girlfriend's uncle, uh, transgender uncle TT Jerry, who just got out of prison. He was in prison for 25 years, and he got married in jail. So she was like, "What the fuck? Like, how does TT Jerry get married, and I still can't?" I've had a couple guys come to me with proposal ideas where I'm like, "No, brutal, dude." I had a, a one of my best friends. Uh, her husband made her do like a scavenger hunt. And mm -hmm. like like earn the ring. It was very young. I had to take her through like a scavenger hunt and not tell her what's going on. Like no, I think that's power stuff. Because I think a lot of guys think like this is the last thing I get to be in charge of before right. the wedding. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. I no, see that's the thing. The relationship I'm in is just it's very clear I have zero power and I am not in charge. And that's just what it is. I mean, she, you know, she has my credit card and, and the money, and that's about it. Because but I like that. I don't yeah. like feeling the pressure. That's what they do in Japan. 
Yeah, yeah. The man earns money, gives it to the woman, and she's in charge of Dude, everything. It's just easier that way. Interesting. Because the scariest thing to me, the scariest thing on the planet, and the ugh, things is so gross, is like an insecure guy. Uh, every time I see an insecure guy, I'm like, oh, shut up. He's like, oh, my fucking girl's doing this. I'm like, yeah, dude, you're a pussy. Shut up, dude. Just bow down. That's what I do. I just bow down to women. True. Immediately bow down. I like true power is being able to relinquish power, or at least make other people think they have the power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, no, I'm, I'm genuinely terrified of her. I'll, so. I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you, I also think something amazing happens in your life, especially as comics, because we yeah. can, wi I'll win eventually. Sure. I'll, I'll, yeah. I'll, I, I'll hurt you. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll destroy the way you perceive yourself. Yeah. I'll, I'm trained to say the meanest thing possible. hundred percent. I think about that all the time. Like there was a big, there was a debate in my family. What they were like, oh, cause my daughter's name is Delilah DiStefano. And they're uh, like, oh, DD, DD, she's going to get made fun of. I'm like, if anybody makes fun of my kid, I'm a professional comedian. I'll call fucking Dave Attell and we'll write like legit roast level. Like I'll have a six year old and fuck, I'll, their family will commit suicide. Dude, you know, I'll get heavy hitters in dude, here. Dude, comedians, we don't, if you hurt someone we love, we're just too, we are armed to ruin in the way you see yourself forever. As comics, it's like, I'm telling you, dude, try to make fun of my daughter or my kid or my stepson and see what happens. Just see what happens to you with words. But, the words are going to hurt. I don't need to beat you up. No, no. I will, I'll ruin the, your brain. Yeah, my daughter can read now. Yeah. That's that's a you fuck. Can, you can heal from a bruise. I'm going to hurt you in a way you can never heal You from. can never. You know, I'm going to take the thing that bothers you the most about you and yeah. your family and your body and I'm going to Fucking, I'm gonna give you an insecurity for the. I'm gonna give yeah. you an eating disorder. Hundred percent is what's gonna happen, dude. You're gonna be so miserable. You're gonna defect and join ISIS. That's how much I'm gonna fucking ruin your life. But your kid needs some adversity. Yes, they do need adversity, which is why you being a parent is enough. They, uh, that's probably all they need, actually. Yeah. You know, I have a cousin who fucking planned her pregnancy. She's the worst lady. Uh, oh, just what ladies. do you mean? Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. Planning pregnancy is not a bad not, thing. Not plan. I didn't mean it like Jesus. that. She's she's the worst for other that's stuff. That's what most people do. No, no, but we had. I, I see. I disagree. I <laughs> want to take the stand. We did the unplanned pregnancy. Yeah. And my kids are survivor. Okay, like the we're not promoting unplanned pregnancies on if the Good for You podcast. Uh, <laughs> if you're we support out there, plan. Parenthood. We, no, I support Planned Parenthood. Do whatever you want. Your 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 body, your choice. If you get but, raped, keep it. That's what Chris is saying. Well, I'm just saying. I'm just saying that if I, my daughter was unplanned, so the thing she survived in the embryo yeah. was insane. Look, I, most of us weren't planned. I mean, certainly my generation. If you're the second, third, or fourth kid, you probably weren't planned. Yeah. Do you think like the winners of World War II, their moms were having planned pregnancies? No way, dude. They were shitting those kids out, and then they were putting them That's in right. parachutes and going into Nazi That's Germany. That's right. That they were, no, they were sending them to, to work. To work, dude. <laughs> yeah, my, but like my cousin, you know, she lives in Maine and she like plans everything and now her son has a fucking peanut allergy. I'm like, yeah, that's your fault, lady. My daughter... The shit, my, my daughter's mom was doing cocaine when we were two months pregnant because we didn't know that there was a baby. Nobody knew there was a baby happening. So my daughter survived it all and she's great. But, you know, my fucking cousin's kid she's has She's going to be so cute because she's going to stay small yeah. forever. You know yeah. how you wanted something she's to stay the best. puppy? But my cousin's kid, I mean, he has to blow out his candles on an iPad because he's allergic to candle smoke. It's like, dude, you're a pussy. It's because your mother planned you. That's I the do, issue. I, does uh, Delilah have any allergies? Delilah has zero allergies. She's, yeah, no, Delilah. A friend of mine, uh, was worried about her kid having a peanut allergy, so she drove her to the emergency room. They sat in front of the emergency room, gave her a peanut, and just sat there for yeah. an hour and drove off. Dude, you know, I swear to God, we were in the pediatrician's office like three months ago when my dad, my dad moved to Tampa now, but when he was there, we, we took her to a pediatrician appointment, and he was with me, and I swear the doctor was a new pediatrician. The doctor says, oh, we don't have our most updated chart. He goes, does she have any allergies? And my dad goes, yeah, Democrats. <laughs> <laughs> and the pediatrician was just like, uh, Limtard. Yeah, I was like, wow, dad, shut up. <laughs> That's cute that he I comes know. to the pediatrician with no, you. No, my dad, you have to understand, my dad, like, legit, like, may have assisted in hiding and dismembering dead bodies when I was younger <laughs> or before I was bored. The, he loves my daughter. On like, some level, do you think he's following around to protect her? Because he yeah. thinks that maybe his mistakes in the past could haunt the family that and i think he knows what a pussy i am so he's probably like it, my my son's not gonna do it this kid's got fucking he's got eczema he couldn't beat up an adult yeah, when he, he was 14 beat up his mother's boyfriend <laughs> but no you know it's funny you know not funny but like cute when, when they moved to tampa my stepmom told me she was like oh she's like we were cleaning out the house and moving she's like and we found this little doll that we had gotten when delilah was first born and it was like buried back and there was a little baby diaper on it and i'm like what do you mean and he was like she was like your dad used to practice 
diapers on your daughter's dolls. And like, we forgot, she was like, he would never tell you that. She was like, don't tell anyone that. I was like, well, I'm telling everybody on Whitney's podcast. <laughs> I'd always do my, you know, change my daughter's diapers. Even my girl gave me credit. She was like, I gotta be honest, like you change diapers. Like you really get in there. I'm like, yeah, absolutely. Like I, you know, I've, I've cleaned shit out of, you can't imagine where baby shit gets into. <laughs> My own mouth. I mean, her ears. Like I'm like, how did you? How did you shit in your ear? But you just got to clean it out it's and so do it. Cute. I love it though, and I love being like a girl dad. So this child, if it's you know, people are like, don't you want it to be a boy? I'm like, not really, because I just feel like you know. I mean, whatever. I want it to be healthy, of course. But I like just having a girl. It's, Is there any like as like because I think that I, that I and then we're gonna I'm gonna ask you one more question and then we're gonna get to games. We have some games. Benton, you good, baby? Yeah, I'm great. Benton's love... about to come in and play games with us. Oh, fucking! I love Benton, dude. Great um, hair, the Benton. Best. I the think best. he's got great hair. He's an icon. He is an icon. He is. That's he's good a, hair. He's iconic. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, you have the same hair as my mom. That's that is that <laughs> hair. That's like <laughs> my she, she's hair. Mom, genius. No, my mom's trying to be trendy and cool. I'm like, I got to hook you up with Benton. <laughs> Wait, yeah. did she did, yeah. did she die? Yeah, yeah. She's got the little. Your mom die. also. Yeah. Your mom also got a TikTok. She's like, great. Um, she sh she blows past us all on TikTok. Yeah. Last question, which is, I feel like I I'm always have hot takes with like, mm, is this something kids should be watching? Is this should little girls play with this toy? Like, I'm always just in that area. Right, right. And then I'm sure people roll their eyes like, oh, Whitney, no one was traumatized by Wizard of Oz or whatever. Is there any toy that your daughter has gotten where you're like, don't love the message? Um, don't love it. Uh, I was lucky. I got. I didn't get a lot of toys as a kid. I got My Little Ponies mostly. But oh, there my was daughter a, has like twenty of them. Those are my shit. Yeah. I was a horse kind of girl. Yeah. But is there, are there ever like movies or anything where you're like, ooh, that's a weird message for a five year old? Yeah. No. A I man mean, will save you. White knight. Wait for the man. Like any of those where you're like, well, honey. That's not real. Well, it's one of those things where, like, to be honest with you, I guess, like, being in comedy and trying to be, like, aware of, like, everything that's going on. Because the thing is, like, you know, being in entertainment, it's, like, all these issues, these hot button issues. Like, they're in our world. But, like, the average person, like, just doesn't care. They're like, oh, I got to figure out how to. calling your child average? How to, like, make money. No, I'm calling my cr child's mother average. <laughs> um, and, yeah. Just a darn hit. Yeah, no, no, I'm kidding. You know, I know she heard that. No, but she, there's a lot of times where, like, I'll be watching, like, we were watching Pocahontas the other day. Uh -huh. and, and I was like, I was like, like I said to Jazz my girlfriend, I was like, I was like, isn't this kind of Jasmine? Her name's Jasmine. My girlfriend's oh, name's Jasmine. Okay, and there's a Disney movie called Jasmine. Dis okay. Yeah, Princess Jasmine. But but Pocahontas, okay. I was like, isn't it like we can't we, like it's like kind of bad? Like they're saying like Native American people are savages and call them savages, and like John Smith is like the white hero. I'm like, isn't that like no good for her to see? And Jazz was like, no. She was like, my daughter. She was like, fuck this. You know, she was like, everybody wants to get all up in arms about everything. And my daughter can tell the difference That's between what she said. fiction and right. she, yeah, and she and my she said straight up to me. She she was like, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna tell Delilah as she grows up. She's like, honey, when in doubt, get yourself a white man. She was like, look at me. She was like, I got saved by two white guys. And I'm like, wow. She said that to my face. And I was like, okay. I have a feeling that Jasmine would have been just fine without both of you. Both, I know. I know. <laughs> I have a stinking suspicion. You know, you know what? Is it sinking suspicion or stinking suspicion? Sneaking. Jasmine is the one. See, that's the thing. She's the one that told me. She was like, I was like, I was like, oh, like, look, we got a nice like multiracial baby now, half Puerto Rican, half white. She was like, absolutely. She was like, and I'm gonna that tell her. going to college. She said she she was like, I told her, she was like, listen, on college applications, we're going to be Puerto Rican. On job interviews, we're going to be white. She was like, that's exactly what she said. She was like, that's how we're going to do this. I was that like, yes. so. Yeah. Yeah. So but my point funny. is, is like a lot of the stuff, like I'll be the one who more will be like, hey, I think we should do this, this and this. And Jasmine will be like, yo, stop being. A, she'll always call me. She's like, you're going to need to stop being a bitch. She was like, well, my daughter will be fine. She's like, we'll be fine as women. And I'm like, OK, all right. I'm just trying to fucking I don't know what to do. I'm trying to help. But a lot of times I just get but told I also to shut up. Comedians, we see everything. And yes. We we just we everything we see is uh, we're professional complainers we're yeah. professional critics we're prof yeah. you know so it's like every movie you see you're gonna be like honey don't look you know yeah I I always trying to like be like earmuffs or whatever but you know I, I, listen my my family's like very like kind of like old school too like I have a cousin who's a firefighter like she's like a was the only one in her graduating FDNY class oh. and like she's like one of like the toughest people man or women I I know like I remember somebody tried to break into our house when we were 19 and she threw the burglar out the window <laughs> I'm like, so this girl, okay. <laughs> like, she just doesn't, like, sometimes the women in my family, I have to be like, hey, Wait, 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 how old was this burglar? Like, what? Dude, I'm, I'm coming back down. Also, who says burglar? I go old school. <laughs> 
I want to go out there. <laughs> Who says bur- the scalawag? The scalawag. This was... rap scallion came no, right I, up to the window. I, I, both our moms were at work. My cousin used to live. In, we all grew up in the same house. And my mom and her sister and her kid, that's my cousin. And we and I was coming home from like the store. Both our moms are at work. And I see the police and fire department on our block. And I'm like, oh, my God. They're right outside my house. I thought something horrible happened. And then I see this guy in handcuffs. And he was like, my arms are broken. And I'm like, what the fuck happened? And I go in. And my cousin, she's like, yeah, somebody tried to break in. And I'm like, what did you do? She's like, I threw them out the window. I was like, oh, okay. Crazy. Um, did you see that Sebastian Maniscalco, the intruder in Chicago? No. Okay, so. Well, I know his bit when he said he would shoot his intruder with a bow and arrow. Did he? Yeah, that's right. It's a but great bit. No. He, oh, his cousin or something like that okay, killed somebody? No. So um, Sebastian Maniscalco's cousin is named Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah. And he lives in Chicago. And I guess someone thought they were robbing or burgling as you, uh, Sebastian. And they fucked with the wrong yeah. man of Scalco. Yeah. Not that Sebastian couldn't have handled a burglar. He, he could have, yeah. I just feel like he'd be like, let me take off my yeah. my bedazzled yeah. jacket first yeah, before yeah. we handle this. I like, got to do my hair like, if I'm going to be in the paper. Give me one paper. second to just handle yeah. this like a gentleman. Yeah. And then... Uh, yeah, the guy, uh, he, he went in. The cousin, whose name's also Sebastian Maniscalco, was the victim of a home invasion. Two masked men came in. Wow. Cousin Maniscalco shot and killed a 58-year-old man, Larry, in self-defense after Bradley Finnan, who cares about these motherfuckers, forced their way into the home in Arlington Heights. You're exactly right. They were planning to steal $200,000 they thought was yeah. inside the home. Well, don't fuck around. That's the thing. If you want to mess with, like, even sometimes, like, older people, you ever hear about that story? Don't mess with Italians in general. Italians it's like, in it's, general. Is it kind of a rule I'm learning? Or also, like, older guys. There was a story, I feel like it was in Colombia, maybe. Somebody tried to, like, a senior citizen, like, old, you know, bus was going around like touring Colombia and these Colombian guys got on and tried to rob them and one of the guys had fought in World War II and he <laughs> broke the the robber's um, clavicle and it stabbed him in the heart and he killed him Jesus. on the bus. And, he, and like, but then they like went on and like just like went into like the early bird special. Like he was just like, yeah, I've killed Nazis. You don't think I can kill this Colombian idiot with a fucking handgun? It was a wild story. I was like, what? And like Colombia was just like, yeah, thank you. I feel like once the collarbone's out of your body, like you don't need to stab the person in the heart. It feels no, like no, no. A, he stabbed like... him in the heart with his collarbone. He broke his arm, and then his collarbone stabbed him in the heart, Jesus. like in inside his body, and he killed like this full guy. Like Steve Irwin. Yeah, with it's the... just what happens. But that's that's where you don't mess with old people. Yeah. They know how to do stuff. Dude, when I see old people like at, in public, uh, th- like. They'll have a Band-Aid on their face. Well, oh, yeah. They just had a Band-Aid on their face yeah. for like three days. But you know when old people will cut themselves shaving and they'll just have a piece of bloody toilet paper like yeah. hanging and they're just like, yeah. all right, dude, yeah. I will never fuck with you. I'll never fuck with you at all. When I used to, at one time I was a physical, and, they, and all those old, the, the war veterans, they all fight with each other. Like they think like, it's like the things they were saying. I'm like, what? I used to be a physical therapist at um, the VA hospital, the veterans oh, hospital sure. in New York. And I remember one of the rounds I was doing was in the same at the same time there was a World War II vet, a Vietnam vet, and an Iraq vet. And they all had suffered I would like, listen to that podcast. Dude, and they all had suffered like war injuries and stuff. And like the World War II vet would call the Vietnam vet and the Iraq vets pussies. They'd be like, you, you didn't do this, you didn't do that. What did your tanks have? They didn't have How this. much napalm have you snorted? That, that's what one of the World War II guys said. The World War II was like he was like fucking napalm. He was like, what is that bullshit? He was like, I killed Nazis with my bare heads. He's like, okay, you killed a couple of Vietnamese. Whoop the fucking do. Nazis uh, were stronger, to be yeah, fair. To they be were fair. on methamphetamine. They yeah. were on drugs, dude. Yeah, they were on drugs. I know, dude. It's I know, fucking Panzer Chocolat. The Nazi, Nazis, <laughs> that stuff. I mean, they would literally be on methamphetamine. Oh, they were on fully, like... They called it tank chocolate. Yeah. They would just take a hit of tank chocolate and go, wow. That's why you ever see those old videos of Hitler when his arm... He was like, legit, a, there's your drug addicts. Yes, that's yes. what that is. And that's how they got so much done in such a short amount of time. Yeah. They, the Nazis created crystal meth. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. wasn't like given to them. They made it. Yeah. It was wild. And what was the thing about you... Uh, because you know so much about history. Rogan uh, told me about this once, and I how they would scar their faces. Really? Yeah, they would scar. Nazis would scar their faces at just to look scarier. Well, you know the whole like skull and bones. Like when you look at skull and bones, you're like, ooh, poison or negative. That wasn't even a symbol before the Nazis. The reason why we look at those symbols, skull and bones, and think like danger is because that was on Nazi tanks. Dueling scars, the badge of honor of many Nazis. They were part of the original Fight Club, an underground fighting gang. 
and they would, uh, uh, when you got a certain rank, they'd give you a giant scar on your face just so you look like a scary But you know what? History is interesting because I read this. I like to read books. How do we know any of it's true? Well, that's the thing. I always, like, I, I hear, I heard the American versions of history all going through mm -hmm. high school and college when and whatever. When I go back and I look back at my, my uh, I was helping one of my nieces with Zoom school. I was like, I didn't learn, this is, not, I learned no. that Columbus came over no. and found an America. No. It's totally different textbook no. now. I wrote this, I read this book, The Nazi Symbiosis, it was called. It was about like. Symbiosis. Symbiosis, sorry. You know what I mean? Hey, what's up? I'm fucking Chrissy stupid ass. Um, um, I, I, uh, I read this book. And and it was all about how the Nazis became the Nazis. Like mm -hmm. what what was it there? Before the internet. Before the internet. And it was like all Wild. all the ideas they got in the in the Holocaust for like gene therapy and like all this like, you know, stuff that they would like, you know, take Holocaust victims and like do horrible things and try to like mix their genes and their blood to do that. They got that from the British and the Americans. They were the ones doing it first and they were the ones like Gregor Mendel, like kind of like with the, um, you know, trying to manipulate the peas, uh, a, a peas genes and do that. The Nazis were like, oh, they're doing it. That's where they stole the science. And then allegedly, according to this book, you know, the West, uh, the, the allies knew like Churchill and, and FDR knew that what was going on in the Holocaust, but they were yielding results. The Nazis were yielding results with like, there's a lot of things that happened with medicine like out of the holocaust and they were like oh let's not raid that until you know because they're getting these results we can make money at doing this it wasn't until they stopped getting results and hitler kind of went off on you know and was like oh i want to go attack russia and kill everybody in russia and, the, and he was like just kill everyone in the holocaust camps and they stopped doing science then they liberated the camp so sometimes it gets murky with history i'm like eh, not everyone's all good or all bad here and also it's like i'm doing this thing um this project uh, uh, in Harpers Ferry, everyone's heard about it, um, that I work with, but in Harpers Ferry, West Virginia, where the John Brown that, raid. That's beautiful, the John, I, the Harpers Ferry, West Virginia. No, is one Hilltop of the, House. So it's, it's my one of the dream. craziest thing I've ever, craziest sceneries I've ever seen in my life. So my dream is to renovate that hotel. My dad managed it when I was a kid. Dude. Right there where the John Brown raid. And growing up, I would, uh, yeah. my babysitter was the John Brown Wax Museum. Yeah, Robert E. Lee came in. He was That's the one leading the charge. Exactly right. Uh, George Washington surveyed the property when he was 17 it. years old. It's the most beautiful property I've ever seen in the United States. Uh, Thomas Jefferson said it's the only view worth the trip across the Atlantic. It's the yeah. most beautiful. It looks like Narnia. It looks like New Zealand. Yeah. My goal is to have movies come shoot yes. there to bring money. They have a candy store there where they make candy I've from like, from it. yeah, there That's you go. Right. And yeah. so this is the John Brown Museum. We'll show some images. This Shout out to Bleeding Kansas. When I grew up, I would go to this John Brown Museum. It's the most terrifying thing on the planet. And you think was, John Brown's hot or no? This He's so hot. I know a lot. He I, was I, played yeah. by a one Ethan Hawke in the, uh, and looks kind of like Yeah, him. John Brown's a hottie. Was a hottie, and he, he was the first, um, you know, that was, I mean, Maybe not the first, and it just wasn't documented. Like, I'm, whenever you s read this history, because yeah, be now I'm going now. in and I'm getting all these documents that there's, like, literally no history on. Like, I'm right. discovering all these, right. like, s slaves that, like, no one's ever written about that sure. were, you know, uh, in these revolts that no one ever documented their lives and finding journal entries and stuff. Like, there's so much stuff that we just, like, do sure. not fucking know or we know through yeah. a, 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 lo a lens that's just not true. But I would uh, spend my childhood, this is probably why I'm such a twisted person, at this yeah. uh, wax, creepy-ass John Brown Wax Museum. I it. And uh, it's my dream to rebuild. Well, you grew up in Harper's Ferry. I spent my summers there. That I, that's amazing. I like. Lo I want to. I want to. I need to make sure my daughter sees that place. So look, I will take you. I'm going on the 20th. Let's go. So look, I've got. Well, I this can't is, because of COVID. Oh, this is like the deck. They don't for care it. in West Virginia. Uh, Do they, they care? care uh, uh, don't they have the mobile vaccine places in West they Virginia? They have mobile. Like they'll pull up to your uh, um, house and give you a vax. Like subutex vans for opioid over. There's there's some vans, but they're not. Uh, okay. West Virginia is fascinating. They're the, there's flip sides. They were on the Confederate and the Union. Well, West Virginia was the first because one said the, we're not doing slavery. They broke yeah. off to say we are not g doing slavery. No. And for West Virginia to now have this reputation for being like backwards and please watch the documentary Hillbilly by Ashley York if you have not. She's actually directing this. Series. Yeah, but you know why? But that in my in my opinion from the research that I've done, that's the Confederate. That's Confederate slander it's from this day. It's like because they were pissed that when West Virginia flipped sides and Lincoln let Virginia I flip. Now. So now the Confederacy was like, okay, now we're going to fuck West Virginia and say that they're hillbilly backwards people when they never really were. Woo! Time for a second break from Chris Stefano. He was he was being too funny. We need to slow down. Yeah. We need to get back My to abs us. Hurt. My yeah. Abs hurt. We need to get back to us. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that if you've been listening to this podcast, you're probably going, Whitney has a boyfriend? How is he possibly getting an erection with that personality? 
And that mustache. I did shaved you, it. Did you guys see her earlier? Uh, <laughs> I shaved that's it. a callback. Uh, so, look, ED is a big part of my life. ED? Because BD. It, that's a big deal. What's big, uh, it's a big part of my life, as you may know, because of the um, uh, uh, my general vibe. Mm-hmm. You know? I can see that. I'm a vibe killer. <laughs> like, as soon as, as a guy wants to get, I'm like, did you wash your hands? Let's go. Like, where did you, you wash your yes, hands? Yes, I get UTIs and I have this. I have. They're got, not supposed to do it with their hands. I know. Well, no, if you're going to put your hands all over my body and inside my body, I'm like, let me see your nails. I'm dating a rock climber. His nails are full of rocks <laughs> and like just who knows, like powders. And I don't know what they do, but it, it seems it's it doesn't seem sanitary. He's in a quarry most of the time. A quarry. I just so I like kill a vibe. Yeah, I, I can, can kill that. a vibe fast. I can see that. So his foreplay is washing his hands. Yes, but the rock climbers can't get their hands wet because it fucks up the skin calluses. So I'm like, he uses sanitizer. <laughs> it's got to burn a little. <laughs> the whole thing's a nightmare. But the point is, Roman comes in very handy uh, to get him back. Your man back up and running mm-hmm. when your personality has killed the mood. With Roman, you can get a free online evaluation on carry, ongoing care. Oh. Shit. Bing. For <laughs> sorry, the word care just my haven't said right, that. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, for erectile dysfunction, from all the comfort and privacy of your own home, you don't have to be embarrassed. Yeah, not at all. A licensed healthcare professional will work with you to find the best treatment plan. If medication is appropriate, it ships to you free. Free. Two day shipping, so you can get that boner back up and running in time for Bada bing. the new Stormy Daniels joint. Here's the thing: a, lo- a lot more guys are getting erectile dysfunction these days. I don't. I'm not a scientist. every guy I've ever slept with. No. <laughs> but uh, but with JK. porn, you guys are watching a lot of porn. Mm-hmm. The pandemic. Right. It's a lot. Guy, yeah. you know, a lot of stuff is being done digital. So by the time you see yeah. a real woman these days, you might just panic. Right. Right. You're right. like, what? They have pubes since when? <laughs> Take care of your erectile dysfunction without leaving your home. Complete an online visit today to connect with a healthcare professional and take care of it. Handle it. Go to getroman.com/whitney now. You'll get fifteen dollars off your first month. It's really time to take care of your ED. And remember, get started today and you'll save fifteen dollars on your first order of ED treatment. My dad's name is Ed, so that was like just a weird to <laughs> read it. <laughs> Sorry, Daddy. Uh, I love that you think your dad listens to this. <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> like, oh, honey. <laughs> okay, uh, and that's it. Ritual. 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 Okay, so ritual vitamins play a very big role in my life. And the irony is that I've been using ritual vitamins since before I started this podcast. Mm -hmm. And I've been singing from the rooftops how much I love ritual vitamins, getting my friends uh, into ritual vitamins. But now that they're a sponsor, I cannot seem to talk about them without saying the wrong thing or getting Uh, in trouble. Oh. The irony is I love this product so much, but I'm like, it changed my life and my hair's like, like, I believe it's done so much for me, but I think legally I'm not allowed to say right. most of the compliments I want to mm-hmm. say about it. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to let Emily take it. I'm too enthusiastic. Too enthusiastic. You love it too much. I love it too much. Ritual is a multivitamin reimagined. Look, this is the uh, vitamin. It? Look how cool it is. It's got, You can see it. And it's minty smell. Is it going to smell like a jelly bean? No, it's not going to. Oh, that is refreshing. It's like you take it so that, that you don't have like a nasty wharf burp after oh, it. Oh, great. I, this is me during the ritual ad. I have to this, I have to duct tape my face. Okay. Let's just, we can make that a regular thing. <laughs> a multivitamin should contain key nutrients and forms your body can actually use to help fill gaps in the diet. No shady extras. Ritual's delayed release capsule d- design delivers high quality nutrients, including vitamin D3 in just two daily pills. Ritual is designed with your life stage in mind. Now available for women, men, and teens. Ritual multivitamins are scientifically developed to help support different life stages. Get key nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering my list. <laughs> Get key nutrients without the BS. Ritual is offering our listeners 10% off during your first three months. Visit ritual.com slash Whitney to start your ritual today. Okay, so now we're going to play some ridiculous games. Benton is going to explain what's the first one. Let's do it. We're going to start off with um, doing one where we're going to go through old, we're going to go back to old tweets. Shit. And we're going to see if you guys can guess, the three of you can guess which comic these tweets are. Now, they're all people that are like your friends. So they're nobody like random. They're all like, like God. a year old or like. They're old. So you don't need to know how old they are. <laughs> okay. Um, if they're mine, can you not read them? <laughs> yeah. So we're gonna Please. S- we're going to start with this one. Okay. How are all these women so pissed off about wearing masks? Um, 
Wait, no. Who wrote this? <laughs> if it that sounds oh. like Bobby Lee, if it's spelled wrong, how, Bobby Lee. how are all these women so pissed off about wearing masks, but okay with wearing underwear, push-up bras, and thongs? Whitney, that's something. That's me. That's a hundred percent Whitney. Is that me? That's you. I'm, I was gonna. Yeah. I first I went. That's a good joke. Yeah. Because <laughs> you said. I like that it is wrote wrong, and you went. If it's wrote wrong, it's Bobby Lee. <laughs> what idiot wrote that? Oh. I know. I was gonna guess Whitney or Donald Trump. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> <laughs> That's it's Whitney tell. or Judy Tenuta. <laughs> yeah, Judy Tenuta. Shout out Judy Tenuta. Okay, next one. Imagine someone gifting you their dick pic in one of those homemade macaroni picture frames for Valentine's Day. That. Um, Imagine someone <laughs> gifting you their dick pic in one of those homemade macaroni <laughs> picture Is frames that Annie for Annie Letterman? Valentine's Day. <laughs> no. What? Did you used to be roommates with Annie Letterman? Yes. Didn't I make that up? <laughs> yeah, no, no, I was. Me, Annie Letterman, and Mike Racine. I don't know if you know but Mike you Racine. you never date? I don't. Annie and I never dated, no. That's so funny. And I never tried to date. I never yeah. did. Annie, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I never Annie. did. Yeah, I love, dude, who doesn't the fucking best. love Annie? The best. The best. The best. I, we started doing open mics together at the same time in New York City. I was so scared of her for so long, and I'm so bummed how many years we lost together because she wore such big hoops and um, yes. a belly shirt. <laughs> w- women yeah. that just wear cut off belly shirts at night to do stand up, I just was like, dude, I'm, I was just I love terrified. Her. She's so of her. nice. Dude, and then before the pandemic, we just like were like, oh. No, yeah. We're obsessed with each other. But we were like like Panthers at the comedy store. We kind of never, never talk. talked, yeah. you yeah. know? And now yeah, no. like, I can't get out of my fucking house. Fucking Annie. Um, okay, next one. Oh, we don't know who that is. Macaroni, dick picking a macaroni. Um, dick picking a macaroni. Dick picking a macaroni. Is it um, uh, um, Taylor Tomlinson? Um, no. No. Oh. Um, give is, us a hint. Is give it not a, a woman? No. It's a man? Mm-hmm. Ant. <laughs> uh, who um, is it? Um, it's um, me. I oh, oh, so Benton! You? <laughs> that's a good one, Benton. Shit. It's a good one, Benton. Follow Benton you on Twitter, guys. He's, vibes. he's one of the few comedians that's just really trying to write jokes these days. So yes. Follow him. <laughs> I drink almond chocolate milk. I'm gay. That's me. <laughs> that's me. You. Yeah. That was you. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's me. <laughs> I drink almond chocolate milk. I'm gay. Yes. That And that wasn't all, me. That was, that was re- my father, actually. <laughs> I just was paraphrasing. All the responses back to you, are they, they're all... We're saying, why did you write this sentence backwards? <laughs> I drink almond chocolate milk instead of I drink chocolate almond milk. Well, because I'm Chrissy Dyslexia. And I I love that you didn't give a shit. You were just like, no, that's how I meant it. Yeah, no, no, I don't care. I'll just keep it up. I have a huge gay following. Shout out. And, a, and the biggest transgender fan base on the East Coast. Is that true? That's a fact. Last one. Oh, uh-oh. Instead of saying, I like garment Parmesan wings, you can just say, legally, I'm not allowed to see my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good tweet. So funny. That's uh, a funny tweet. That's well written. Yeah. Who is that? That's a f- Greg Geraldo. I was gonna say, man, that's is that somebody? It's old. Oh, that's like a compliment. Uh, uh, Colin Quinn, David Tell. David no. Tell is gonna be a guest. Really, no, he does a tweet. Um, to clarify, old tweet, not an old person. It's an okay, old tweet, not an old person. Okay. So it's a younger. So me. Is it like an Anthony Jeselnik oh, or somebody like close, that? That's or is it? Oh, who's you're a, in the right vein, I think. Uh, in the right vein. Sam Morell. Sam no. Morell. Mark um, Norman. Um, 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 Santino. Is Duncan it Andrew Chussel. Santino? Don't no. Is he uh, West These Coast or East Coast? Write jokes. Get back to the people that write jokes. Let's hold. Jim Norton. Um, Ooh, Jim Norton. Good guess. Um, wow. Let's, it's let's be so offensive when we when you say who it is. I who is it? Tell me. It's Tim Dillon. Tim Shit! Dillon! Yeah. Timmy! No, that's a very old tweet because he's not like trying to start some shit yeah. with the company. Yeah. It, it, well, he, it he was he January 25th, 2001. Oh, really? Sorry. He I didn't tag Airbnb. I thought that, I, how I, could it be Timmy? So I didn't no one's recognize paying attention. it without you tagging Rogan. <laughs> Wait, that tweet is 19 years, 20 years old? No. What? 2021 is now, Emily. I know, but you said two. You said 2001. Oh, whatever. I'm dyslexic too. <laughs> there it is. Now what? Are you going to bully everyone? Welcome to the squad. Yeah, yeah exactly. Now have... you know what it feels like. All right. To what? Who we have that? meetings who on Thursdays that? and Tuesdays. Whoever Nobody won, won that. Who lost? Nobody won that. Everyone Nobody. lost no, that. Literally okay. no one got one. That's right. the other game we're oh, thinking Oh, I actually of. won because I knew the Whitney tweet. I'm the only one. Oh, yeah. You're the only you one got a point. Well, I guess I my own play. tweet. So the rest oh, yeah. of us have to eat a jelly bean? What was the uh, the consequence? There was no consequence. That was a warm-up game to get to the Okay, so what's the next one? The next one is comedians heads up. No, the next one is I thought. Is that the one you want to do? Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. Okay. So I'm going to put a comedian on my forehead, and you guys, I have to guess who it is based on you guys either saying their jokes. You can't say their name. You can't say their podcast. You can't say a name of their special. You can't say 
Um, Anything that's going to give it away immediately. Yes, you have okay. to. Okay. Each it go has around to be something it. in their act got or it. an impression of them, so I think. So we'll all guess Whitney's, and then when it's your turn, we'll guess yours. Very got it, got it, very got it, got self got You have a I ca <laughs> But if I hold this up, we need to get rid of the monitor because I will see it. So let's lose oh, this. Oh, yeah, we'll all see it. You know what I'm saying? So let's, uh, do you guys do these games every week, or is it a new game? No, just when we think a guest is going to be boring. Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, I am. Okay, great. Cutie! I see. Okay, ready? I can't see it. Okay. Okay. Um, cars, 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 cars. Jay Leno. There yeah. it is. So now it's Chris's round. turn. Now it's Chris's My turn. Got it. Pick one. All right, so I pick one. You can't look and, at it. Okay. It and I just, I just put it on your forehead. Okay, hold on. Hold on. I, I know because I saw that one, so I want to. <laughs> um, um, uh, um, oh, UCB, um, New hands, York, Apple, <laughs> Shit. Um, trolls, goblins. Um, I mean, can we um, say Broad City? Like, is um, that Alana Glazer? No. Oh, I'm um, the wrong person. Okay. I'm doing no. the wrong person. Is it Alana Glazer? Yes. yes. Oh, okay. Great, great job. But no way. Well, well thank God you like Broad doing... City. No way. <laughs> oh. It's part of her. Is it Alana Glazer or Abby mean. Jacobson? Wait, Alana Glazer is on Broad City. But you're not allowed to say the name of her show. Well, thank God you did because I was doing Eliza Sisslinger. I think that's it. A blue one. <laughs> so it, and I was committed to it. You just started yelling yeah. words. Okay. What'd you get? Mint. Okay. God damn it. Ooh, okay. Lucky. <laughs> I got shit. Um. Uh. Um, she just uh, got married. Her wife's really hot. So yeah. There it is. Yeah. It's so funny. Okay. Then Emily. Emily. Okay. This hasn't. We haven't burned any bridges yet. This is shocking. Great. Let's flip it over. Oh. Um, oh uh, glasses. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. I did my all the time. Glasses. Like specials. Ali Wong. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, not Whitney Cummings. <laughs> I was like, is this how Whitney's telling me she's pregnant? She can't get pregnant. <laughs> Let me see. Oh. oh. Uh, dated oh, Ted, Ted Danson Dredd when he had black hair. Yes. Oh, wow. Ted Danson. Was it Ted Danson? Yeah, of yeah. course. By the way, yeah. fre fresh reference. I could have just said The View. <laughs> um, oh, you uh, love this one, Fenton. Uh, this I look like her now. SNL old school. Um, you look like her now. No, the, I, the, the uh, no, most iconic female comedian uh, after Mae West and before Joan Rivers. Phyllis Tilly. Yes. There you go. She was on SNL. Was she not? I, I look like she her was now. On SNL. I don't think so. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's okay. I don't. I don't know if she was on SNL. She was. Yeah. What? Emily was very offended. She died. Women are funny. Oh, um, very insecure. Uh, uh, Emily uh, no. loves um, loves Whitney. Gets, friends, good friends uh, with Annie Letterman too. Just thinks yeah, coffee lots of is a brand. She's Lil. Esther. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. She's never little. does stand. She's so she's little. Never does stand up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she's little. <laughs> okay. Oh, turn around. Let me see. Oh. Oh. Um. um uh, oh, you voiceovers. You like him. Love yeah, you him. do like. He's very so talented. Funny. The one comedian you like. I so talented. Uh, His we, family. Yeah. They own like can all the black ops. Can we say who they dated? Can like, we say who they dated? Nickel. Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> they will. His family will press a button and you will die. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. I don't think a lot of people know that. Oh, sorry. Well, there you go. <laughs> Wrong know. person to piss off, Chris. All right, here we go. Uh, turn over. Oh. Uh, okay. uh, I don't know. Um. um oh. Um. Oh. <laughs> it's a lot of this um, when they're on stage. Uh, a lot big of words, movements. big words, big words. Loves dogs. Uh, big well, words. A lot of action, great kick, staff, very uh, hilarious, great hilarious, staff, hilarious, great brilliant. picks, great employees, um, amazing people. Genius. Loves oh, working oh, with Michael. Genius. Visionary. Loves working with Michael Patrick King. Um, um, visionary, uh, brilliant. Your hero. Yeah. You're a hero. You're, when he comes, yes! he's my hero. Wow. Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, everyone froze yeah. when it came up. And like, everyone, she was like, fuck. She's a great staff. <laughs> okay, turn it over. Um, sick boy. Cauliflower ear. <laughs> Brennan oh, Shaw. Yeah, there it is. CT. Is it Brennan Shaw? Yeah. Got it. Good job. Okay. Oh, Let me see. Turn it. Um, uh, okay. TikTok. Big, t big, all big TikTok, TikTok. Exploded. TikTok, Quarant my biological TikTok quarantine. Yeah, TikTok. Yeah. Yeah. Quarantine TikTok. Trump. Someone yeah, I don't Trump. like. I big mean, Trump. Trump. Sarah Cooper. There yes. you go. Yes, 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 yeah. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that could have gotten way meaner. Tick, 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 tock. Tick, 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 tock. Turn over. Uh, she's a unicorn. Uh, she's ready. She's ready. Takashi 6 9 uh, Kevin Hart. Uh, uh, Tiffany Hart. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah. Just naming other people. Yeah. I know. Yeah, what? Yeah. Okay. Was, guys, we're good at this. I know. This is legit. I mean, I'm not, but you guys are. We haven't are. got one wrong yet. Um, uh, mullet. Uh, mullet. 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 The mullet. King. mullet. Theo. Yes. Theo. Mine are very easy. <laughs> I know. You're getting really easy ones. Um, I'm surprised we haven't uh, hurt anyone's feelings yet. 
Let's hurt Emily's Here right now. Here we go. No, um, uh, uh, she has a oh. great joke. Uh, she's uh, um, um, babies she have killed skeletons. the roast of Justin Bieber. Skeletons. Gloves. She was, um, loves gloves. Uh, uh, yes, she dress, gloves. dresses like she's from the twenties. Yes. Now. Oh, shit. Very tiny. Yes. Her white. husband is definitely circumcised. Her husband. <laughs> <laughs> Natasha Lachey. Yes. <laughs> um, oh. uh, um, uh, the queen. Uh, the queen of the red carpet. Oh, the, um, uh, QVC. Joan, Joan yes. Rivers. Yes. Uh, Johnny Bates. Yes, All the right. babe, the great, my favorite. Uh oh. Um, oh um, yeah. Brilliant. Uh, um, no, yeah, he yeah, just talking. he's talked oh, yeah. about how he put his finger in his butt by accident and yeah. didn't know he had COVID because um, his girlfriend smelled the, the poop um, under his hair. Yeah. Asshole couldn't. army. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, but Andrew Schultz. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. too early. Yeah. Was that that was a catchphrase or like that was the a asshole army? That's Broad the, city. That's a <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Let's do one more round. Right. Okay. Turn over. Oh, we had that one already. We had that one already. We had that one already. Turn over. Turn around. I mean, um, has <laughs> millions of dollars. No, no, no. He, Joe uh, Rogan. He has everything except a right arm. <laughs> oh, yeah. He's a great basketball player. He's Loves an bears. Amazing athlete. Oh, Tom Segura. Yeah. I, mean, I love incredible him. Incredible basketball player. I love you, Tom. Yeah, great basketball player. Dude, I don't understand. That no. was the most painful oh. looking break I've ever seen. It was Dude, crazy. He has everything it, except a right arm. It made no sense the way he felt. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the way. I'm sorry, again. I, I know it's really serious, but I, I really lose my shit when people fall and I she can't does. stop laughing. No, that one was brutal, was, though. I was like, oh my yikes. God, like a good fall. It is I so, do love I mean, a good Emily fall. fell the other night at the, at the cook. I'm sorry. She fell at the improv and she fell hard. Hard. <laughs> she fell. She, she hit fell. her head, head Are first. Are comedy clubs open here? Can we, is the improv open? We did it. I was on the roof of a mall. Oh, oh that's so cool. the roof of a mall. I want to do spots. Indoor dining is opening uh, this weekend. So you I'm think the clubs will open? I'm doing a show on Friday night. Uh, in Tomorrow uh, night? Uh, yeah, come do it. Um, Where? Uh, there's there's a lot of cool like outdoor shows popping up. And okay, then, I'll text you because I've been dying to get on stage. Yeah, inside's going to be soon. But yeah, it's uh, these outdoor shows. You're on a stage. It's like 50, 150 people outside, it's a blast. Do you ever do the shows here anymore? Uh, where? And didn't you used to do them? I used to do them outside here, yeah. yeah. I was do I was doing that for a while, and I'll go back to doing it, um, but it was like I was paying so much money for testing. I get it, it was, I get you it. You know what I mean? And then all right, people, I'll find out what's going on tomorrow. People want to come on the internet, like, you're spreading it. It's like, all right, oh, God. get out of here. Turn what it over. Um, uh, um, Resting. He opens everything, but oh, this is the best joke you're ever going to hear. So many dead babies. Dead, dead babies. babies. Dead uh, Anthony Jones? Yes! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dead babies. My teenage years. Yeah. Uh, turn it over. Um, uh, uh, it just to pull this show off of yeah. Netflix. He Ohio. put, he put uh, that C symbol on the side of a ventilator if he could. <laughs> um, he took his show <laughs> off of Netflix. He lives in Ohio. Yes. yes. Okay, last one. Turn it over. Turn we already on. did it. Oh, did it. Did it. We, we did, it. did it. Emily, what, what sex do you have? I know. Turn, turn it over. over. Um, uh, um, She's now caring for a cripple? <laughs> she's yeah. she's she's like um the the she's widow the of the right Christopher arm Reeve. of her husband. <laughs> oh, Christina Pavinsky. Yeah, we love Christina. Um, Christopher Reeve. It's my oh, shit. Okay. That's great. <laughs> That's literally Christina's life. Yeah. Tom Segura is the new Superman. That I need to see that movie. And then are you on tour? Yes. Uh, well, uh, no. Right now, because um, I'm doing a show, oh, hosting it. a show for True TV called Backyard Bar Wars. Can uh, you try to wait, uh, a way, uh, find a way to not make a racist joke? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. On the show? Yeah. You no, think, yeah. You think... I kind of, I kind of, I told them as soon as they hired me, I was like, you've listened to my podcast, right? And they were like, yeah, we want it to be edgy. I'm like, okay. That, <laughs> they always say, you listen to the first 10 minutes. Yeah. And we're like, this is fun. You have yeah, no, no, no. no. It's no going to be the same thing as Ultimate Beastmaster. I went, they asked me to go in the mask uh, dancer to be a judge. And I went out there. Brian Austin Green was one of the judges who I fully yeah. was in love with yeah. when I was a kid. And I went and Paula Abdul was there. And, and Ken, Ken, Dr. Ken and, and Ashley Tizzle. And I just went out like guns blazing. Sure. I was like, I'm only here to fuck Brian Austin Green. That's like, what it, I went Love fucking, it. They stopped down. Yeah. All like five people came out with <laughs> like clipboards and they were like, "You, we need you to truly stop." Like it was like because there were people in the audience and it was being recorded oh, and they were like, "We need you to stop talking." But but I'm t but you know what though? They it's, were like, "It's a kids show," but it's also a kids show. Yeah, on ABC. but it's like, but that's why I love doing Read the podcast. The that's why the podcasts are so beautiful because like we don't have to be in that box. We could just be comedians and like be the group of people that yeah. say things you're not supposed to say to like give relief to society. And also we, this is you know that we like to go. Into dangerous territories, yes. even if we're, we uh, uh, 
say things we don't mean or we just we have to be able to like have these yeah. uncomfortable conversations and be wrong yeah and like, we're idiots we're comedians like like why don't i why i don't understand why now there's this thing where like comedians jokes define who they are it's like yeah. they're jokes it's like if i'm making a joke about it because yeah. i probably feel the opposite of yeah, what yeah, i yeah. just said yeah, 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 yeah you know what i mean because i'm joking about it yeah but that's why i love doing podcasts on my patreon like that's why on i feel like patreon just saves you know what i mean in a really a really uh big part of what comedy is is devil's advocate and defending something you find reprehensible like as a comedy exercise being like yeah. i'm pro gold diggers here's what like it's just like no dude it's we're law in a way we're failed lawyers I, I think and too like amongst comedians it's like you can't be hateful and funny it's like one or the other it's like the people get in trouble because they're yeah. like oh it's just a joke it's like no you're there wasn't even remotely funny that like wasn't, yeah. we know that it's not funny because your heart is filled with hate but us it's like yeah. you know we just like we're just making jokes because it's to give relief to the groups yes. you know but people are like you can't you can't say that word so it's like fuck them we stay in the podcast stay in the patreon patreon.com slash christy comedy <laughs> and just that's where we live and if true tv finds yeah. a joke from 10 years ago and they fire me good i'll just come back here fine yeah Who cares? It's, like, it's so bulletproof great now. it's almost like that's why i love like the andrew schultz and the tim that had, didn't make a mistake 10 years ago oh, on God. twitter jesus it's like yeah it's like even like there was like a uh, uh in my daughter's school her teachers went out um and were like you know bars are open in new york outdoor dining mm -hmm. they were like they went out and had a drink during the parent teacher conference and one of them posted on the instagram and then they sent to the teachers uh to the parents group like look at our 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 child's teacher drinking i'm like she's 25 years old like yeah. if she wasn't drinking I'm I'd sorry, be like, if I'd... you were teaching children all day wouldn't you need yeah. a drink i was like do you know my kid you know have, fucking horror have my... you hung out with your own kid yeah this, this is so yeah dude so many of my parents friends or sorry so many of my parents friends so many of my friends who are parents yeah they uh parents. are complaining about they're like zoom school so awful my kid i'm like yeah you you just had to spend time with your kid finally. Yes. Your kid kicks me in the shin every time they come. Your kid's yes. a dickhead. Oh my god, dude! I mean, quarantining with a five year old. It's like I was welcoming COVID. I was like, two weeks on a ventilator. That's a vacation for me. <laughs> every teacher should get free scotch at five o'clock. Yes, I was like, but these people are just cancel crazy. It's like shut but up. But also, there it is. I think there's a. a, a a real absence of a important and kind of boring conversation about addiction because these are also yes. people that are addicted to self-righteous indignation uh. and we are like there it's cancel culture it's also a lot of people that are truly addicted to the internet addicted to the yes. th adrenaline they're getting from yeah. this and we're we self-righteous indignation is an addiction yeah. like alcohol drugs sex or sure. anything else so also we have to have compassion for this as people. a comic what do you think is a cancelable offense like what would you be like oh, they, that as a comedian i think anything on stage or anything that's an attempt of a joke mm -hmm. to me no matter what it is mm -hmm. no matter how big of a swing you're you take and you miss, miss you're it's okay to miss. it's off the stage stuff if you do right. something that's a violation of our societal rules like you murder someone you rape someone yeah, you, you do something jail, like that something illegal that, but right. even that i'm like I, even like stuff like that my whole thing is like like let's say like the bill cosby thing it's like why did we i as an as a citizen like why did i even know what was playing out bef like we have a court of law like he goes to he goes to the trial he goes mm -hmm. to the court he's he's judged by a jury of his peers and then he goes and, and does the appropriate sentence why is all the, everything this trial by twitter bullshit is very 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 dangerous and scary but it's always happened it just it happened at water coolers it happened in people's yeah. homes like you know and it's it's tricky. We've always had a version of this. That's the other always, thing. Yeah. We've always had the Roman yeah. Colosseum. It's a double-edged sword. There's a lot of good that comes out of that. Yes. Yeah. Like, but there's also like so much the like, overcorrection. Yeah. Overcorrection. The behavior does have to change. But we go, like the, I think you have to go super far to come back. And there's just the going to be people. But we we ask for change. But we won't. Then we don't allow for the change. We don't, yeah. But no, also no. Yeah. when we go so far and get sanctimonious about it it makes the people that do need to change not yes. want to learn. Yes, and So then, it shuts people down and everybody, when we're self-righteous. And that's the thing, and with the self-righteousness and the narcissism comes, well, if you know, if everybody is a criminal, then nobody's a criminal. You yes. know what I mean? If everybody is is this piece of shit because of X, Y, and Z, then we all are. It's like, there are people that do bad, heinous things that need to be tried and, and removed from our society, but I believe when they serve their penalty, whatever their, our judge, jury of our peers come up with, yeah. then they should be allowed back into society. They have now paid for their crime. I feel like, especially doing this episode that I did on my podcast, the Chrissy Chaos podcast with T.T. Don't T. listen to it. Uh, yeah, if you don't want, you don't have to. T.T. <laughs> Jerry, you know, who's in jail for 25 years, talking to someone who's like a convict who wants to better their life. I was like, he was like, you know, I come out and then I still can't get a job. People still look at me as a criminal, but I paid my 25 yeah, years. Yeah. I, you asked me, I committed a crime when I was young and I'm sorry for it. And I 
stayed in jail for 25 years so why am i still treated like an outcast and i was like that's so true like yeah, anybody crazy. who does anything i'm not saying you have to give them their exact job back that's you know it's private citizens whatever but it's like to just be like oh you're still a fucking piece of shit get away and you from can me. never vote again it's like those are the exact people that need to vote they've been in the in prison yes. they know about more yes. about laws than we do yes absolutely yeah. and according to tt jerry they all love donald trump so we need their votes for yep. 2024 <laughs> <laughs> and like it's just um you know i, I think just the difference there is that when we cancel celebrities it's like oh you have so much right that yeah. we don't we don't ever want to see you again because yeah. you're fine right whereas like what you're describing is like that's terrible yeah yeah yeah, yeah and i think that it, and and look like uh, you know it's it's hecklers like i think you know hecklers they don't know the damage they're doing and i think a lot of people on twitter i think a lot of times they don't know the damage they're doing sure. yeah. uh, if i may like uh, not to sort of defend people that are intentionally trying to ruin people's lives but i also think like there's this carelessness especially among really young people that haven't made mistakes yet and they yeah. don't they don't understand human flaws and they don't understand yeah. you said that dumb thing once because you were trying to impress someone and you felt like shit when you said like yeah you know what i'm saying it's like half the yeah. shit i look back at that i'd probably get canceled for. i'm like dude no one was yeah. thought that joke was worse than like trust yeah. me I, I, I'm way uh, more mad at myself than you yeah. could ever be. Also, yeah. they're living in a different world. They have yes. information we never had. They've only lived this way. Yes, yes. that's true too. We didn't. Yeah. We had different movies, different shows, mm -hmm. different jokes. Mm -hmm. And they take so like one mi one microcosm of a person. Like, I mean, 160 characters in a person's life to yeah. define them. And yes. then you make a judgment call on that human being. It's so I've ridiculous. I've also never gone out of my way to trash a comedian that I didn't like, like, like or, or, or an artist or something. It's like the idea of like, I just don't fuck with that person. The sure. idea that people are like, we need to cancel this person that like they're not even fans of. They're just going out of their way to just throw grenades at people they're not. And it used to be you just didn't go to the show, you didn't buy their album, you that's didn't participate. It, yeah, and it's just kind of like, you know, like with that whole thing, it's like if you're going to be act actively out there trying to cancel someone, then it's like you better be squeaky clean yourself because that camera, will, that spotlight mm -hmm. will always turn back on you and nobody's perfect. Mm -hmm. Nobody. I mean, good people do bad things, bad people do yeah. good things. I mean, it's just what it is. Fucking Martin Luther King was the greatest person of all time. He used to beat the shit out of his wife. Yeah. Hitler's a horrible person and he was a vegan and loved animals. Like, what do you want me to tell you? ChristyComedy.com. <laughs> <laughs> I will, so you're just hell bent on getting canceled right now. Well, I'm just, it's just because it gets I'm frustratingly joking. annoying sometimes where you're like, everybody's a bad person when now. Also, put, the scale we, keeps moving. So yeah. In two yes. years, we could be like, what something we thought was correct now? Yeah. yeah. Just be wrong. And just be wrong. By the way, we're allowed to be wrong. It's like canceling John Wayne. Like, what are we? What are we? Like, oh, God. Everyone knows he's an asshole. Like, I don't oh, think anyone, like, God. does your grandmother's John Wayne poster on her wall bother you so much? Shut up. Your grandma has like posters on her wall. Understand Saying, you know, they went after John Wayne for being like racist or whatever, and it was like, of course he yeah. was racist. My yes. grandfather said racist and shit. Dude, I get like taking down statues because you don't want to, you know, yes, memorialize of course, of things, course. but it's like you can't erase history. Like yeah. my daughter, I will tell my daughter why the Confederacy happened. I will mm -hmm. tell her why Nazism happened, so you don't repeat As it. But should. but now I feel like this whole movement where it's like, so she doesn't just repeat erase it because so she would. She would. Your daughter. Oh yeah. Would a hundred percent. Absolutely. I gave her an iron cross for her fifth Jews. birthday. <laughs> yeah. I had it signed. <laughs> um, no, I'm just like, so that to me, and as comedians, we're just like, you know, what we do, and I'm just like, man, like, these people, because because the, the, the irony of it is, is when you go into a room, like, for when you're not in cyberspace, you're not on the internet, when you go into the room and it's all different people of races, religions, they're all just laughing in unison. So you're like, is it, was it a problem, or is mm -hmm. it just a problem in cyberspace in yeah. this one realm? Yeah. But the cyberspace realm has implications in reality, so sometimes it gets dangerous where you're like, wait, the person who's tweeting trying to get so-and-so canceled yeah. probably doesn't even care yeah. about what they did. They're just narcissists. They just want the power for themselves. Great. But they go on the water cooler the next morning and probably have the exact opposite views. Mm -hmm. But that person's life got fucked up in real life. Totally. You know what I mean? But I will say about comedians, as someone that just brought this conversation up, I love it. There is a point where we do have to stop giving it. Like, we're professional complainers and we yes. and we we are the ones that have blown this out of proportion. Oh, no, no, yeah. So my thing is, like, we complain about Hot Pockets. Like, no, comedians no. will complain about anything yeah. And so some like there'll be a couple tweets quote canceling someone and then we'll make it yes. we'll talk about That's it in every true. podcast every podcast we'll retweet it and it would have probably just gone just away, away dude. had we not exacerbated it always it. goes away and now you don't get it's you don't really at least in our field you don't get canceled by you know evian water or some company you get canceled by other comedians now it's other comedians yeah. going out there and being like fuck you fuck you fuck Which, you by the like, way never happened when we were seeing each other every night at comedy clubs there you go now that everyone is is at home they're just throwing each other under the bus like Absolutely. we used to have to you yes. know it's been interesting to see the 
the like everybody gonna like turn on each dude, other. Dude, like, I Jesus. think most of that stuff is like I think half the time we're fighting with someone on Twitter too. It's not even real people, dude. I believe ninety five percent of them are Russian bots. I yeah. believe it's other countries trying to cause diversion and and the fact that we're responding to it is just like so silly. Yeah. I feel like Sergey in Moscow just laughs his ass off. He's like, he think we real. Also, people are allowed to be <laughs> upset. Like that's yeah. the other thing. If you're upset about that joke, like you're allowed to Great. have feelings. Great. Don't come to the show anymore. Know, Unfollow I me. I don't know what your childhood was. I might have walked into shit and triggered you. Yes. I mean, uh, Jim Jeffries got knocked out on stage when he made a joke about suicide because someone in the audience's brother had just committed suicide. Like we don't know what okay. shit we're walking into. Yeah. We don't know what stage of healing you're at. Like, but it's also it's like I think if it's we're, also clean jobs to adjust with the time. So right. it does kind of make you a better comic. When yes. It, oh, you absolutely. have to kind of like shift into new and new things. Yeah, I agree with that. I because love- we can't keep being like Oh, well, in the in the fifties, we made jokes that we have, but we don't live in the fifties now. Right. But also, no, so I, and like, I've seen it, and that's the audience's is job to stop laughing at shit that isn't funny. Yeah. So we, we need to grow, and certain shit just isn't funny the way it used to be. Like you know, because there are some comics that are like, well, how come I can't? You're like, well, because you just can't now. Also, you just can't now. Also, so find something else. But also, it's not funny first. Do you know what I'm saying right. it's yeah. also just like so. This comedian went out uh, once. I was at the comedy store. I think I've told this story on the podcast. I just think it's important. Uh, came out, this was maybe like two years ago, and started doing jokes about fat chicks. Okay. And it was like bombing. And then a woman just went, hey, can you stop? Yeah. I've seen the same comedian do that same joke in Nashville and the same thing happen. Wow. <laughs> so there's a point where the audience will decide. The people sure. not at the show don't need to decide. Yeah. yeah. The people at the show who saw the context, yeah. who saw the crowd not, la- like, right. that's that to me is like, right. now that, you need a course correct because that's not right. It's not working. Funny. But that person doesn't deserve to lose their career over it. You know what I yes. mean? No. Over, Unless oh, they're going to double down on it. There are the right. comedians who like want to fight you on but this it. Yeah, which is ha- ridiculous. Which is this crazy. This is like, not you- new. There's always been consequences. Yeah, and like, you know, a couple hundred years ago, if you were a woman, you'd just get killed. I mean, there's certain things. Right? If you, <laughs> I get it. That, you know, so I, it, it is an interesting thing. And also, I think comedians also need to remember, I said this before, is that the more stuff that's off limits and taboo, the funnier we get. Oh my God, yeah, it gets harder and harder and harder. And then it starts to weed out people like, you really gotta be good now. You know what I mean? You really gotta be funny because if the ones who are just on the border, it's like they'll lose their whole career. So let it, we'll keep taking, like there is a way to take risks uh, uh, well-intentioned risks when you're trying to figure out if something is sure. fun. And then you might go, we've done this before, where I'll go down a road and I'm like, this is a, this is this line of thinking is not conducive to a hot, That's fresh the whole take. art of being a comedian is I have to try to say, we all have to try to say that thing that we're not supposed to say, craft mm-hmm. it in a way, an art- artful way that's making everybody laugh and feel comfortable where we're like stepping to the line or slightly over it. But yeah. we have the joke that left turn where a lot of times people will just tweet something like, it was just a joke. It's mm-hmm. like, no, you just tweeted a slur with X exclamation points in yeah, the American yeah. flag. Yeah. So my thing the is- The worst is the mob mentality. Cause the mob mentality yeah. can start to make you feel like, oh, am I a bad person? And then, oh, you yeah. have, then you start to like switch but it up. That's biologically wired into your brain. We Which are is wired to point. get the approval of the tribe yeah. and to yeah. get, and also as uh, 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 the reason public speaking makes people so nervous is because uh, on a reptilian primordial level, that meant in tribal times that you were making your case to the tribe. You're right. You know, there's a very, yeah, you're on trial completely. So this mo- that, that Madness of Crowds book is really good that explains this mob mentality of like a lot of people when people go, yeah, fuck him, they feel safer when they do that. Right. So it's we have to recognize that we are wired to do this. We get dopamine when we sure. gang up on someone yes, else because yes. we think we're safer. Yeah. Well, that's why comedians. That's the worst part is like other comedians doing it. That's when it gets really scary. I well, think. that's that shot and because then stuff. it's just like yep. oh, shit. yeah, like. And all. comedians, there's a lot of, if you fail, I win, which is not true. It's like the new right. competition. We, if yeah. you get canceled, I have another job. Oh, no, there <laughs> exactly. were some people that me when the Chris D'Elia thing happened, a lot of female comics I know and I've seen the screen grabs who thought that I wouldn't fucking find out that they were talking to journalists trying to throw me under the bus because right. they thought I they would move up in the, it's just not how it works. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that's why it's good that we all, you know, or, or you know, people need to have something outside of comedy and entertainment like you know whatever it is like you have your project and yeah. I, I have my family where it's just like because it just, the shit just goes away where I'm yeah, just yeah. like Ugh, all right, I'll just, I'll, again, I'll just push my kid in a swing and then it goes away. I'm not going to sit here all day but on social media. But also, you understand we're used to feedback. Yes. Like, we're, and I think that's part of the reason they sort of, and we will engage with it. A lot of people won't. Like, a lot of people just will not respond to it, ignore it. Oh, like, that's the real problem. Com- most comedians are comedians because they were bullied or picked on or something. Been, so now when you have, on. when you have confrontation, you're right. like, well, I have to say oh, something Oh, but bad. also, dude, you, I'm made for this. Like, right, you're right, right. like, fucking. Just making it worse, making it worse. Let's go. Like, I don't get to do this in my relationships anymore. I don't get to get 
in fights with people. Like, I've been in recovery. Like, but this is, if you come for me and give me a legitimate reason to defend myself, like, I'm fucking. Right. You kind of like wait. it. Because you're kind of like, well, now I have fans of people want to see me and I need some to argue Oh, I sure. want to go in the ring. Like, give me any opportunity to fight you. But then if you're going to come for a comedian, get ready. Yeah. You, you're coming for a comedian who's going to screen grab your profile and fucking post you. Yeah, and they're you, coming back. Yeah, yeah you know we're going to come back at you. We're not, yeah. we're not yeah. scared of confrontation. We're not. And if no. you if you try to publicly humiliate one of us, like, I feel like we've been pretty cool about it. Yeah. You know, I feel like most people have been pretty cool about it. Because yeah. if you fight back, you're the bully. Because you're. Yeah, no, I don't respond to. I mean, you know, it's like the things that people say, you know, it's like every day I get a DM because somebody calling me a negative name. I don't care, dude. Res yeah. Or people are like, oh, fuck you. You're not funny. But it's also, like, you went out of your up. way to DM me and say that, dude. I I'm, I've already accomplished all yes. my dreams that someone knows me enough to even dislike me. Yes. Don't you love that you're not funny? Well, there's a list of people you can click on that follow me. There's a full list yeah. of people that think I'm funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And all, But also, like, you love me. You're sure. Obs you're obsessed. If you leave any comment, yeah. you're obsessed with me. You yeah. love me, and you're yeah. just having a bad day, and you want my, you're pulling my pigtails. Like, I... I negative comments to me is like I look back when I was like 15 and all my dreams and if someone yeah. told me hey you're gonna be so in the public eye as a comedian that people are gonna be saying you're not well, I'm gonna be like I dude sign me up but think about that even what we were going back to before think about a person think about what state of your life you have to be in or what kind of person you have to be to comment negatively publicly on anything I mean, as my I, therapist would say yeah. sounds like they're in a lot of pain yes have you ever I left would, a negative comment on anything I wouldn't I've, I've never, never in my life left left a negative comment on anything I've never left a negative Yelp review I've never done any of that because I'm yeah. like I will just move on with my life this yeah. thing didn't work for me but we have big voices and big platforms not everybody does yeah, you but, know what I'm saying. Some I'm just saying it makes people feel. Well, I'm, get on stage. I'm not saying it's good. I'm saying it. I no, know. I mean, never in my whole life have I, I done it. But I know never. why people do it. It's be, they feel they're in they're hurting. They're in pain. Like you know, or they're mean and, and and nasty people, and they have to live their lives, and we get to do this. You know, so, most people just want attention back from the person. Yeah, but even understand. even when I know, yeah, always when someone says you're an old nasty busted cunt, and I'm like, hey dude, I hope that worked. Is usually what I'll write. And like, Great. Oh, and then they're like, I'm no, so you see that. Always becomes a conversation. Like, yeah, okay. that's. that's yeah, it's people have a sickness. Bless your heart. You know, yeah. Who yeah. the fuck? Like, we need to stop complaining about negative comment. It's so um, uh, childish of us because right. comedians' whole thing is we should be able to say whatever the fuck we want, but you can't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. pick a lane. We have to decide one or right. the other because we're like, I want to say whatever the fuck I want whenever pick the fuck lane, I want. Pick a lane, picker. <laughs> and but you're not allowed to say anything negative about me, but I'm allowed right. to say anything negative about anyone I want. Publicly. Right. You that know, sounds, so it's like that sounds reasonable to me. <laughs> <laughs> that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. As um, a fan, I think that sounds great. As, yeah, um, as me, all you need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> Um, because that is really what we do. We go into a room and say no one's allowed to speak. If you speak, security's going to remove you. We are such fucking brats. I know. I know. That's a really I know. Good I, I know. This whole podcast, we've been like saying like everyone's a narcissist. It's like we're the ones that go on stage and be like, sit down and listen to me. I have the microphone. Literally, out of the thousand people here, I am the most interested. Not only that, I'm going to charge you yes. sixty dollars to listen to me speak for an hour. Yeah. Complain. Uh, what's that? And to hear me complain. <laughs> yeah, complain. Yeah. About luxuries. Yeah. Yeah. About how good. Yeah. Like and then when you say something not, I'm going to go. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so just much. paid fifty dollars for me to read out of a notebook. <laughs> Because I didn't want to even prepare for my set. You just, I love that your tickets, you're like, yeah, I was like 60, you're like 50. <laughs> 50, yeah, yeah, I'm almost at 60. But no, yeah, $48. Yeah. We asked you to like order shitty food. We asked yeah. you to get a babysitter to find parking for me to be like, so what else is happening? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, what what are you Ugh, up to? For me to do crowd to work. To ask you where you're from in your own city. Yeah, we immediately yeah, come. To, to, so to, you're from here? To yeah, find out if there's any birthdays in the crowd. <laughs> And then you immediately make fun of where they're from. I hate this place. Hated, <laughs> yeah. hated driving here. Hate the club. They yeah. pay you to come watch you trash their city. Oh God! I mean, it's like we are such. We are we such. We deserve to be killed. Spoiled. <laughs> and then we're just giving everyone COVID. I mean, we should. Yes. We are awful, awful people. <laughs> what can you do? Um, but yeah, but I wish people, um, just in general, comedians, like just. We're not trying to be your heroes. I don't know no. when we, people started thinking comedians were the people you like look up to. Yeah, why am I being held to the same standard as a politician? I'm just a comedian fucking doing, tweeting jokes from my bathroom. Like, think, why, why think, are you taking me so seriously? Uh, you know who why do politicians it? have joke writers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that Good is call. true. That is yeah. true. I um, uh, John John Stewart ruined it by being so smart and serious. So smart, funny. I'm a plebeian. Compared I, to him. How do you end your podcast? I've still a year in, don't know how to end the podcast. Um, I just have the producer zoom in on my open asshole. <laughs> I just, oh, I just, that's my pitch. Yes, <laughs> that's your. Yes. but I don't know how to use a zoom. Yeah, I don't true? do it anymore because I have warts. <laughs> uh, oh, <laughs> anal warts. Do you shave your balls? Manscaped.com. <laughs>
Um, lawnmower 3.0. Um, Everyone I, uh, has the fucking sponsorship. I know. I'm just curious. I'm just I, curious. I, I, uh, I do. I do. <laughs> this is this is less. Me- I What's do, going on that this is so I, hard for you? Because to... when I'm with my girl, I, you, you know, if you shave your balls, it's like, why are you shaving your balls for? What you're trying to look good for. So I don't do uh, it as much, but I did just recently. I did just recently shave my balls. Yes. Uh huh. Yes, and it was good. And but you have to. I'm so fascinated <laughs> by how guys do it because do you have to put your foot up on a like? I feel like you have to put your foot up and you gotta like no, hold it and pull it. No. Do you oh. know what I do? What? Do you know what I do? I figured out the secret, at least for me, it works for me, is I actually tuck it back. I give myself a mangina. It's easier to <laughs> shave my man pussy than it is my uh. dick and balls. So I go old. So I go. I go Buffalo Bill. I Buffalo oh, Bill it and I shave. That's yes. That's such a great reference. Yes. And then I let it fly back and then I, you know, shave my the the hairs floating off my actual testicles. And then oh. I do it all in the shower. Oh. And you know, I get some of it on my daughter's Barbies and whatever. We just clean that off. <laughs> My daughter's Barbies are transgendered because of my beauty <laughs> care. Your, Bar- oh, your Barbies have little mustaches. Yeah, that's, that's why, because it's it's inclusive. Well, I, I think, have an inclusive Barbie for my daughter. I think we figured out the best way to end these now. We just ask. Yeah, for our tutorial. Well, that's it. I'm obsessed Balls. with that, because, yeah, my thing I is... I don't if like you, them. If I you're going to do it... it are they, are they I get waxed. I've never... If the you, ball? Yeah, I get waxed. Doesn't that hurt? <laughs> Interesting. Well, that I have like the hair removal most places. Hurts so. so yeah. Much. The, yeah, the ball, because wa- I, I used to do the waxing. Well, it's not right. torture. There's like buildings. You got like. And it's so oh, fast. Oh, You've yeah. ever been waxed? I've been waxed and it hurt like all hell. And then the only reason that I like didn't start crying is, is she was like, you should get, see guys when they get their balls waxed. I went in for, new, I moved to New York first time. Big city girl went in to get my eyebrows waxed, but they had me take my. Uh, take my pants off so I was like oh I guess this is your just... eyebrows waxed? So I, go, I guess it's just what they do in New York and then she gave me a full Brazilian and oh when I they waxed your ass I was so screaming weird. I was uh, screaming so loud and the woman who was doing it was in chemo treatments she was and she was like you're a such a pussy and I was crying and I was like how can anyone stand this Emily, she's like it's not as bad as chemo what are they doing to you oh my and so god and so I've never done it since and I cannot did they make you get on all fours it. no oh they do that <laughs> did I go to the wrong place <laughs> Wait, what? Sammy's like, I have had a full bush since then. I've I will never not let anybody go The wind was whistling through my jeans. Wait, you guys, <laughs> you guys, you guys. Yeah, when they wax your butt. You guys, they... Benton's been sexually assaulted, and he's coming forward. No, that's what they do when they I wax your know, butt. And if you get on all fours, uh, how never, can they get to it? That's never happened to How me. do you get on all fours to wax your asshole? Yeah, what, what was this say? company? I'm calling them right now and suing them. It's an esthetician that is my friend. Oh, okay. <laughs> she's really nice. Her name's Brandy. Brandy, I've I've got a qualm with you, bitch. I just got a text said you were going to be home by three thirty. Then send me a voicemail at four with a is thumbs up. I'm so we're, fucked. Okay, bye. I am so yeah, bye. fucked. Bye. Don't ride elephants. Sounds like you really need to go. It's well, just, yeah, well, we can wrap well, it's one of those things when you get a text like that. Just, I'm fucked the, already. Like yeah, it's, no, I'm it, done. It, it happened with uh, David O'Yellow too. I'm like, just my done. wife, you, I just went to a, a girl named Whitney's house for seven hours. Like, yeah, yeah, it's I'm in trouble. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> it's recorded, so. No, she knows our podcasts are long. Yeah. yeah. And we have blast. <laughs> she doesn't. She th- I don't know who that is. <laughs> and I don't know that. <laughs> Not a fan. Um, okay, I love you. This has been like love a fucking you. blast. And um, your podcast, uh, uh, Hey Bib. I got Hey Babe with Sal Volcano, which we do. That's a fully squeaky clean show, which is hard to do. We try to, do, we what? don't curse. That's so interesting. And we do it on purpose because we're like, this is a sick challenge to try to do. And then Chrissy Chaos is the other podcast I have. That's my own solo podcast. And I have guests sometime where we go the opposite. And I interview <laughs> Jasmine's uh, relatives who just got out of prison. It was very good. So Thank you. funny. And we have fun. And I have Patreon, patreon.com slash Christy Comedy where I really get fucking wild. I'll shave my balls for the $10 tier. <laughs> the $10 tier. <laughs> <laughs> what is it, $10? I got five and 10. I just make it simple. Five and 10. And then you put videos. I put video. Uh, I do, no, no. I do exclusive episodes that only air on Patreon. Wow. Like I won't ever release them on YouTube or anything. So I do a full hour extra each week just for the Patreon members, for my family. I thought Patreon was just for comedians that were... Could never work again, but you know, this is this is not the case. No, I feel like I want to. I want to. I want to be in all of it. I want to be on TV, podcast, Patreon, do it all. Why the fuck not? I love the, the model pay- mayhem, OnlyFans. Because Patreon, you don't have to worry about. No, any- you just put it out there. You just put it out there. You just relax. Yeah, it's just great. And then I feel like the funniest stuff happens, or some of the funniest stuff I think that worried. I could. Do. Yeah, you're not worried, and the fans just respond. It's great. I love you. <laughs> I love you. Uh, we're releasing you. I'm just, I'm literally just sweating too much. Like, I'm just Me at too. the point where I'm just... And my breath literally smells like jelly bean shit. <laughs> like, I could smell my breath off the mic. I'm like, wow, this is bad. <laughs> it is so fucking gross. Okay, I love you. Um, uh, I love you. Um, do we have announcements? No. No. No? Okay, bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Love you.